Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. If you're seriously hurt in an accident, you'll want all the money you deserve. That's called justice. But there wouldn't be lawyers if justice was easy. No, justice is not easy. It's fought for and it's won. At Brown and Crouppen, we fight for justice every day. If you want some, call 222-2222. Because at Brown and Crouppen, justice is our business. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Rise and shine, St. Louis. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After on KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. At the Morning After STL on YouTube and on TMASTL.com with Tim McKernan, Doug Vaughn, Iggy Strode, The Plowboy, and Action Jackson. 707 in St. Louis, you are listening to The Morning After, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Welcome, friends, to the Munganass St. Louis Acura, Munganass Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, 7 o'clock hour. Timothy Michael McKernan, Douglas Elvin Vaughn, Kenneth Iggy Stroh, the Plowhawk and Action Jackson with you on the radio program, a program that solicits your involvement by texting into the Jeff Lottman Compass Realty. Text inbox 314-881-TMA5. Uh, calling in the Callier and Thompson phone line, 636-9004-TMA, or emailing in for our design, air, heating, and cooling email today, the morning after at InsideSTL.com. Blueberry Pop Pop Doug. Fun yesterday to see him bounce back. Yeah. Uh, probably makes him really regret what took place on uh, <laughs> the mic just broke. What in the world just happened? <laughs> the microphone popped right out of its oh, moorings. Oh, oh, no. Have you ever seen this happen? Uh, it's happened to be quite a bit. Really? That one. Right out of its moorings. Right out of its moorings. Uh, Doug, Iggy, uh... Oh, it's in time. three pieces now. Oh. <laughs> and you didn't I'll even touch it. Right it just there. kind of, uh, went limp. Hold this here. Well, have you know, it. these things happen sometimes in the broadcast industry. Now it's on the floor! There's a screw on the floor! Mm. The last time that, uh, this yeah. happened to Plowsy's mic, and it took him three hours to get it fixed. Well... Hi, Timmy. You may have to sit and hold that mic all day. Uh... We're broadcasters, we're gypsies, we're entertainers, we're not engineers. And when these things go wrong, sometimes we struggle a little bit. Well, Jackson, won't be right? Jackson won't be happy Jackson won't be happy with me. Range? I watched, started watching Oppenheimer yesterday, and I got through like 30 minutes, and I said, I can't take this anymore. Why couldn't you take it? Yeah, it's just so boring. Oh, like I think you might oh, have saved the day, I don't know. Everybody's That's saying it's a masterpiece, 30 minutes, and I said, this is a snooze fest here. Best picture. Seems like you gave it a good chance. Oh, 30 minutes in? And it's like God Almighty fusion and. Uh, uh. What else are you doing with thirty? Like oh, it's really what, what's cool. some people like some things. I you know I just I gave it a shot because everybody said they loved it. I just couldn't uh, get through it. You didn't like the scientific aspect of it. I think you're good. Well, no. Well, you you're a gentleman. There were no naked women in it. Yeah, there was. I, that was kind of a weird scene out of nowhere. I mean, that was just gratuitous nudity. That was a fair assessment. Pardon me. That's a fair assessment. Yeah, they didn't need it. Although it was nice, but they didn't need it. Who got naked? I mean, I wouldn't think Oppenheimer's boring as this guy was who just had sex with a girl he just met. Oppenheimer got naked? 
No, he had his clothes on. Oh. She got naked. Okay. But I gave it a shot. I gave it 30 minutes. I just okay. couldn't take anymore. All right. My headphones are missing, Doug. Well, what a day. And, well, that's uh, why the mic was just so perfect, because, like... Mm. But you got the mic fixed now. The mic Jackson is back. I want to look for, for them now, in yes. uh, the 101 studio, because I didn't use them anywhere else the rest of the day, so I don't know what the hell... Well, I have an extra... I have a couple extra earbuds over here. You want to try one of those? You did find them. Were they sitting in there? Wow, how about that? Thank you so much, sir. Rock you, hey, huh? So. Rocky stole the headphones. Duck He's wetting his beak guy. on Cameo. This guy's becoming a real problem. He is. I wish he'd just play the tuba and live peaceably. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm hesitant to touch the microphone, but Plowhawk made magic. Oh. Uh, Carl Pelker's in the YouTube chat, Doug. You like him, don't you? Uh, I, I don't think one way or the other about him, really. Hey, Doug, you saved my spot in the golf tournament yet. That's from Carl Pelker. Hmm. I haven't been saving any spots. Mr. Smith says, Sup, Mayor. Howard Thompson, what up, Carl? How's the gout? These guys know each other. Oh, the gout's a mess. That hurts. Right on the foot. Uh, coaches John and Dean Ellis. Billikens finish shock the world today, obvi. They play a little roadie, don't they? I believe they play Rhode Island. A team they beat just a week or two yeah, ago. Yeah, so they're primed. They're even favored. For running this tournament. Mm -hmm. I like their chances. Patrick Amakalata, Iggy is a limp. I don't know what that means. How many producers does it take to fix a microphone? That's from Chris. Do you say Rohan or Rohan? I always say Rohan. Hurry up, Tim. Iggy thinks it's his show now. That's from Carl Pelker. Oppenheimer was incredible. That's from Jake Reynolds. I like Carl even if Doug does not. That's from Pio Mai. <laughs> I don't dislike, I don't know Carl. Why would I dislike Carl? Have I met Carl Pelker? I don't know that I have. Wasn't his, wasn't his uh, dad the mayor? See, he probably did then. I, I I don't know. I don't. I just don't. I thought there was a Pelker that used to be a mayor of St. Louis before my cousin Francis Slay. It sounds familiar, yo. James Pelker, maybe. Uh, I, there was a Pelker doing something big. I, I forget what it was. Yeah, maybe they're related. Could very well be. And how closely related are you to Francis Slay? You said cousin. Third cousin. Third cousin. Okay. Any of you get ass face drunk last night and post a video of yourself singing an Elvis song on the fan page? No weird. That's from Beer Cats Doug. He won the Milagro to kill a listener of the month in January of 2023. I don't know what that means. No. Probably Adam. Call her Adam. He has a tendency to just start singing at the piano when he's drunk and usually naked. Mm. Oh. You don't want to sit on the piano bench naked. Kind of ruins it for everybody else that sits there. I would think so, yeah. Well, you didn't do that, did you, Iggy? No, I would get upset at Hito when guys would come down in thongs in the morning and sit on the chair. I said, dude, other people got to sit there. Why don't you cover your ass? Uh, I mean, the, the, the posting of a, of a video last night, you didn't do that. No, I don't post videos of me singing. That guy needs some help. That's from Mr. Licks. So there really was a video of a guy singing an Elvis song drunk? Well, I didn't see I know, it. I know I'm was. asking I didn't see the it. wrong people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was watching The Bachelor, of course. I didn't see the fan page. Uh, let's see. I see a picture of pizza. Uh, Kate Middleton alive. Joe Roderick. Okay. Well, there's probably been a thousand this morning, so you're going to have to scroll uh, there's KG and O-Town handling the Fan Page Club Championship. Yeah. Doug, 69 people have commented on the thread. Okay. Somebody with a picture barbecuing. <laughs> well, these are all Old fascinating I don't, I don't see. Oh, hold on a second. There's. I don't know. Oh, you don't want politics? You don't like Ice House beer? You say? Don't worry. TPP, the one and only drops hits also. Some people can just do it all. I don't know if this is it. it. Now, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I can't help falling for you, Kev's first and only attempt. But I don't know. I don't know if this is it. A lot of word vomit in there. And there's a picture of a guy getting a limb lengthening surgery. Doug, you know I'm getting that procedure. Legs? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go up to 6'5". Oh, so they're going to put... I don't know if foot, people notice. Foot, you think people a notice? A foot worth of <laughs> it's exactly right. bones in your leg? <laughs> Well, nothing you've mentioned has made me want to get back on there. Oh, no. 
I'm afraid you might look high waisted if you got foot long extensions in your legs. <laughs> All right. You know. What do you think I should settle for? Six two. That might be a happy six medium. Two. Yeah. God, can you imagine the scene at Napoli if I was six two? Just stroll right in there, show yourself off a little bit. Oh. Uh-huh. Leave with three or four. You I would have so it. much collagen on me by the end of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Lick says, "Yep, you found it." So I guess this is the. The post plowhawk. Are you able to play this? I don't know if there's any profanity though. I don't no, know. No. Ah, man. <laughs> it's a YouTube clip. Well, I, I'm looking at Mr. L- I don't see it. Is this one of our listeners? It said, yep, it's on the TMA it, fan page. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I can't log into Facebook on here because my like email in doesn't love exist. With with you. You. So. That that song is this what he's doing? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Oh, it doesn't exist. Like, my, what, I'll have to sign in to my Facebook and I'll have a confirmation email to an email that does not exist. Oh, no. Doug, is that your email? Gosh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, the, the email I signed up for Facebook for, like, is no longer active. I don't know the password. I couldn't sign in if I tried. You know, there were uh, some people complaining yesterday about my Speedo picture on Instagram. There are a couple. And uh, I came home yesterday and I get a notification. This uh, post has been removed, and it says it's against our guidelines of sexuality and nudity. Mm-hmm. Your Speedo picture was removed by Facebook? Yeah. Wow, wow, so wow. So it says you can... Listeners came out in droves the other, yesterday It says you can, you can reply to this. So I said, it's a joke. That's all I said. It says, why do you think this shouldn't have been removed? Because it's a joke. But a joke is not a good enough reason. Well, they put it back up. They said... Yes, our mistake. Sometimes we uh, we do things quickly without really searching it or something like that. They said it's back up. So somebody complained. Somebody actually went in mm-hmm. and complained that there was yeah. a speedo picture up there. God, some of you people, man. Oh, gosh. You're going to let them have it now? No, it's just kind of sad. I'll get Iggy. I'm going to report it. They wanted you in Facebook jails where they wanted you. Well, it's back up. Okay. You have any others that you'd like to post? <laughs> yeah. I may post one today. All the nudity's blacked out, but um there's a giant penis, a giant Oh gosh. Uh inflatable penis, kinda like a raft. And I'm sitting at the on the edge of the hot tub with it in my face, but my legs are Akimbo? Yeah, posed so that you can't really see anything. Oh god. Yeah, maybe I'll post that one. Why would you post that? Start pissing people off. Gosh. These are from Hedo. Yeah, nobody's naked. The other, everybody else is in the pool. You can't see anything. My legs are kind of together. You can't see any ween. Mm. Jesus. We're back on the Speedo picture again. Back to Ken. That's from Big Tuft. Nobody complained or reported it. That's from Loomster. And Loomster won Malaga Tequila Listener of the Year in 2022? I believe that's right. Yeah. Well, how did it get taken down? I'm sure that they didn't uh, see Loomster a picture of Speedo and say, hey, take Callier that down. and Thompson phone line, 636-9004-TMA. The only way it's taken down is somebody reports it. Other than I, that, they don't see it. I'd like to submit these first 10 minutes as the worst first 10 minutes in the history of the show. That's from Harrison's brother. Well, it, would, it might be up there, yeah. We had some, like, Well, Tim was mic. having problems. Yeah, so we had we a mic just issue. Threw some stuff fell, out there. Had headset issues. <laughs> yeah. You can't always get bangers, man. Like, no, <laughs> no. Not always real quick Sometimes out of the game. you got to drop some, like, ballads that, you know, not everybody <laughs> loves, but... Munganass, St. Louis Acura, Munganass, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, presenting sponsor. Of the morning after 7 o'clock hour and the Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown, Doug, and now it's off to the players. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. And we'll be picking names tomorrow. That's right. Uh, Jamie Burkhardt, Clayton Patterson, Peter Munganess, Ryan Seiberg. They'll take great care of you at Munganess St. Louis Acura and Munganess Burkhardt Alton Toyota. St. Louis Acura.com. AltonToyota.com, looking for a new car, pre-owned car, want to buy, want to lease, or need to get your car serviced, even if you didn't get it from Munganess, go to Munganess, St. Louis Acura, stlouisacura.com, AltonToyota.com, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. It's Munganess, sponsor of our 7 o'clock hour. Design Air is sponsor of our email of the day, online at designairservice.com. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling. Seth Goldcamp and his staff. I guess it's time to get the air conditioning checked here, even though it's only Borch 12th. I don't know. You may need some heat this weekend. Uh Uh-oh. I thought you said winter was over. It is. I mean, 45, 48 degrees. That's not winter, but it's still... I see a low of 42, or high of 42 on Munsbit. Yeah, a little chilly. And a high of 50 on Tuesday. 
But sunny, Doug, so it'll feel better than that. Yeah. But 70 the next three days. 74, 74, and 80. Then 64 on Friday, 64 on Saturday, 53 on Sunday. Yeah, that's pretty good for this time of year. Get your work in. Design Air Heating and Cooling is online at designairservice.com. Seth is fourth generation. Design Air Heating and Cooling online at designairservice.com. Uh, so Loomster's calling in 636-900-4TMA. Callier and Thompson phone lines. And then you also have the way to communicate with the Jeff Lottman Compass Realty text inbox, 314-881-TMA5. This is the time of year when people start putting their homes on the market. Go to J-E-F-F-L-O-T-T-M-A-N-N.com. That's J-E-F-F-L-O-T-T-M-A-N-N.com to see what Jeff Lottman has to offer. Jeff Lottman, Coppice Realty. He was in studio last week. Uh, and if you are looking to buy a home or sell a home, work with somebody who's been selling them and buying them for people for 20 years. Two years and half a billion dollars worth of sales. That's Jeff Lotman of Compass Realty. Sponsor the text inbox, and his website is jeffflottman dot com. Good morning. I would like to point out that Iggy looked like a skinny Hoosier in the speedo pick. They did not have gyms, or that's Nate in Tallahassee. Yeah, you wish you looked like that. Oh gosh, do we know what he looks like? I don't know that everybody wishes they look like that. Well, you couldn't find an ounce of fat. I mean, that picture so. If you're looking to be bulked up fat down in Tallahassee, then you wouldn't appreciate the picture. Hmm. You were sinewy? Is that what you're saying? Eh, wiry. Wiry. Pretty happy with yourself, though, right? Oh, I didn't mention it. What do you mean he didn't mention it? He, he posted did. the picture. Yeah, but Tallahassee douche. Oh. Tallahassee douche. Talked about it. <laughs> okay. There's nothing wrong with the picture. Hey, Doug, we were talking yesterday about sharing phone locations. I'm not able to do it on my phone. Any of you guys share phone locations with anybody? Nurse? Oh, I, I mean, don't Madison, think I, I think, but I don't know. Well, you go to the Find My app on the iPhone, and, uh, and I don't have the option to do it. I don't know what the hell the deal with that is. Maybe the law turned it off. Doug, we just talked about this yesterday. Off? That's what I said. We just talked oh, about okay, yesterday. Oh, sorry. I don't know. I don't know that I even do that. Don't know if I have it or not. Well, I worry that if I lose my phone, that it's not going to be findable. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Well, hmm. I've never really lost my phone. Thank goodness. Ooh. I've forgotten it a few times. I've never mm. lost a phone. It's a it was tough at Kirkwood battle. Park yesterday, and there was a phone just sitting on the bench, and mm -hmm. I wanted to help somebody. Mm -hmm. but I'm like, I don't know who this is. You know, just know it in mind. And I just saw it sitting there. Could it have been sitting there for yeah. years? I have no idea. I lost mine on my our Jamaican trip, and I was fretting for two oh, hours. Oh, I already mm. forgot about that. And then we called it finally. And it was under underneath a, a towel on a chair or underneath some books. Oh, that was funny. I put the phone down, and somebody put a bunch of stack of mm. books on top of it. Luckily, the vibration is so loud. It's like a 9.5 yeah. earthquake, so we definitely heard it and felt it. You can get on Life 360 with me and my wife, Tim. That's from Steve in Wildwood. Oh, okay. I was at the gym about a month ago and packed up, got dressed, got ready to leave, got my bag, and there was a phone sitting there right on the bench where I always dress. So I picked it up, put it in my pocket, got to my car. The phone started ringing. It wasn't my phone. Wow. I, I had accidentally taken someone else's phone. Oh, no. Did you get a look at any ween pics? No. I just walked back in the gym, and there was a guy looking around for a phone. <laughs> So this wouldn't be yours, would he? Goes, yes. I said, Sorry about that. Where was your phone? In my other pocket. <laughs> said grabbing some on Sam's night. There was no yeah, person around. It was just a phone. Looked just like mine. I think. Oh, there's my phone. Yeah, I've never done that. I felt bad. I'm glad it rang, or I might have gotten all the way home before I realized it. What do you then just throw it out the window? No, I walked it back in the gym. No, if you'd gotten all the way home and. No, I would have driven back to the gym and would you? turned it in. Yeah, sure. Just thrown it out. A thousand dollar phone, you'd have just thrown it out? Well, he would have called. It was my fault. Night. Yeah. You would really have just thrown it out? No. I had to wait until somebody called it and I would have said, yeah, come pick it up. But I took it. So this is the show, huh? This is it, Panger. I took the phone. Yes, it wasn't I'm... on him to come get it, it was on me to go give it back. I didn't mean to. Depends how long the drive was. <sighs> you never concerned about doing the right thing? I always do the right thing. I don't know about that. 
be a TikTok like, video like Spike, about that one. Like Spike Lee said. Okay. What did he say? He said Spike Lee said it. Mm. Okay. Well, how about that blue note? Well, a stunning raw, raw. win last yeah, night in Boston. Mm -hmm. Doug, the second best team in the NHL. And they are six p points back of the VGKs. Mm -hmm. As they come home and have a lot of home games between now and the end of this 2024 campaign. They'd probably have to go on a streak where they win five or six in a row to get back in it. Six points is still a lot to make up. They get kingy kingy on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. That's who they get on Wednesday. Captain, a goal, and what do you call them, helpers? Yeah. It's so hard to figure out this team. I mean, they just look horrendous for I a couple think Boston nights. goes, okay, we can take this night off and get the win. And I guess. They underestimated him, and the Blues uh, played one of their most garbage games of the year on Saturday and played one of their best of the year 48 hours later. How do you do? And they gobsmacked them. That's what they did. How many games are left? I probably couldn't see that. Much. There's no way to know. I'm locking it up. I'm sorry. Okay. There's probably... Man. I, it, 20? Jackson Money Puck, I would guess, has the Blues at 4% to make the playoffs. Let's take a look, Tim. Okay. Money Puck is the official odds maker of playoff and chalice chances. And even when we thought they were going to make the playoffs, they were, their chances were 19%. <laughs> Mm. So seeing as they're six point back of the playoff spot, and then they're like four teams within two points, the Blues for that ninth spot. I just don't. Uh, I mean, hey, I would love it. I'd love me some Stanley mm -hmm. Cup playoffs. Yeah, love to see Binner Binner get in there and just try to shock the world. All right. So, Tim, your official guess is what? Four. Four. Doug, you want to guess on the playoff odds for the Blue now? Uh, that means, five. That means four is not right. Five percent. Uh, Iggs, Plowhawk. Uh, seven percent. Uh, I'll go 4%. My read is it is even lower than 4, and that's why Jackson has a little charge on his mm, prostate. Probably. That's my read. 3.6%. Oh, that's over. Now, if they, win, over if they win their next game in regulation, that moves up to 5.7%. Hey, there you go. But if they lose their next game in re regulation, that drops down to a whopping 1.97%. Oh, no. Jeez, wow, well, big game tomorrow night, Doug. Yeah, I guess. What up, Make a break. What up L.A.? Yeah, you want a piece of this ass? Who they got? Doug Jonathan Quick. He can't still be on that team. <laughs> <laughs> he got him traded last year. He got him good in 2012. Yeah, right? he's been there a long time. Yeah, yeah. They got uh, Carl Grundstrom. Uh, Kopitar. Mm. Grundy. Yeah. Anzi. <laughs> Pierre-Louis Dubois. Yeah, they traded for him. Oh, we're going to take their measure. All right, yeah. Doug, here comes the chalice run. Let's see if I can get a... Uh, that would be a hell of a run if they go from right now to... Let's see what we can get on... Uh, if I threw 100 on the Blues to win the chalice right now. I think that is plus 30,000 would be my guess. I don't know if this run would be any more miraculous than the one we saw in 2019 when they were dead last and came all the way back to win it. Well, I don't They've... think everybody said it was would be. No, Plowsy said it would be. Oh, Really? I apologize, Plow. I apologize, Doug. We're fine. You said it'd be a terrible run. I'm just saying I don't. I don't know that it would be any more crazy than what actually happened to in 2019. Yeah, uh, plus fifteen thousand, yeah. Doug. If you want to throw a hundred on it, the Blues hoist the chalice. When would they do that? And I guess in Hollywood, Florida, yeah, you'd yeah, collect fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, worth the bet, Doug. You got some disposable income lots, there. Lots, lots of it. That KMOV money. I love to throw it at sports gambling. That has it's very sharp. little chance it's of sharp. money. Yeah. If I know one thing about you, it's definitely you love to just spend and spend mm. and doesn't matter what it is. No, it doesn't. The more pointless, the better. Usually, that's, that's the philosophy, yeah. How can I get rid of my money the quickest? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good philosophy. It would be fun to go have... through life to have so much money that you could live that way. I was thinking that as well. Create a company and sell it at like 38 years old and you got a couple hundred million. I mean, that is the dream. Odds uh, are strange because the Blues are plus 15,000 to win the Western Conference and plus 15,000 to win the Stanley Cup. Go figure. You would think that winning the Stanley Cup would be higher than winning the Western Conference. Yeah. Hell, I don't know. All I'm telling you is what I'm seeing. Yeah. So do with it what you want, but there okay. it is. So, uh, Doug, uh, they're going to pretty much win about, oh, I'd say 85% of their games in order to get a playoff. So yeah. That would be my guess from here on out. It's not likely. But who knows? This, 
This is why they play the game, fellas. I don't know if you know that. Well, there were only 17 games. Well, after I, I got, there was a text. What well, is mid March? Yeah. I thought there was like more like 25, but. Well, they got to get scooting then. Yeah, it would be time to start scooting. My fist will stretch your man service, you little bitch. Didn't like That's it. from the recovering alcoholic from Belleville, Webster <laughs> Groves. I don't know who that direct is directed at, but uh, just heads up. Didn't matter. The recovering alcoholic from Belleville has been suspended. He's been His six-day suspension has expired. He's now going on a new two-day suspension to last a period, appropriately enough, of two days' time. The suspension log is sponsored by the Illinois Recovery Center. You need recovery. This guy needs it bad. He claims to have been recovered. He's not. Check out IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com <laughs> while you're serving your suspension, sir. Just because he wants to stretch a guy's cervix doesn't mean he hasn't recovered. Would that be like your your prostate? Like, what would be the man? The gentleman cervix? doesn't have a cervix. <laughs> Work, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, I I couldn't tell you. What's stretching this? anything sounds miserable, even like stretching before a run. You don't <laughs> like that? You like to stretch your legs? I mean, it's just a chore. I couldn't imagine stretching that. Yeah. Have you ever had your cervix stretched, fellow? Clip that off. No. I, I couldn't see a scenario where that would be possible. No. Not it's highly a, unlikely. Anyway. Not a willing participant. Yeah. We wouldn't rule it out. Uh, Doug, future. Mr. Lix yeah, has a request for you. I'm going to the Lightning game in a couple of weeks. Can you ask your boy what the spot is to hit after the game or a good dinner spot beforehand? Oh, uh, there's Greg a bunch Vaughan? of great dinner spots right around the building there. There's a, a number of outstanding restaurants and bars right there across the street from the, I, I believe it's the Emily Center. I believe that's what, the, what it's called. I need a there vacation go, in Tampa. I don't think I've ever been. Very nice. That's what Greg Very said. Very nice. And we talked to him. Yeah. He's not thinking about moving back to St. Louis at all? No. No. Well, now, when you say it like that, no. it, doesn't, it, never... it doesn't indicate. No. Does he know the UFL championship games here? But, I, he must not. I'll send him a communique later today letting him know. But he golfs all the time, so he loves a year-round golf and the thriving city that's growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, but hardly any I don't know what you're trying to Young, say. Young, vibrant city. What are you trying to say? Because I'm feeling like... It's a little different vibe there than here. Well, well, I don't I... like what I'm sensing. Okay. You asked me why you didn't want to move. <laughs> I'm wondering why I don't move. <laughs> I think it might be a better question. Read. The more you answer this question, the more yeah. you realize I probably should get out. Mm, no, well... Well, enjoy the latter stages of your life, Doug. Are you saying Clip I'm about to off. die? <laughs> I'm not dead yet. That's a good one. No, but like I think 20 to 20, that 20 years is about a, the latter of your life, right? Well, if I get 20 years, I would take it. If someone said you're going to live another 20 years, I'd say deal. So why not soak up that sun there in Tampa and go to a couple Rays games? Maybe you can get season tickets. Oh, I'm sure you could. <laughs> you would be able to get those. Yeah. Blowouts. What section do you want, <laughs> Doug? What about all this Midwestern foliage? You don't, you'd miss out on that. It's I, nice, I could Jackson. Care less about watching a leaf turn red. <laughs> could really <laughs> care less about God. that. God, my only God. to have to rake it a few days later. <laughs> You know what I found about South Florida that I found odd was it's so flat. South Florida is completely flat. The whole. The whole state is. Yeah, it, like I missed hills when I was living down there. It's swampland. You don't yeah. see a lot of swampy mountains. No, you're right. So I could retire in Florida if I moved in with my sister and brother-in-law. It wouldn't be bad. And the only bills I would have is my credit card bill and my phone bill. And why would they take care of you like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, they have plenty of rooms. The girls have moved out. They're in college now. Well, do they want you there? I'm sure my sister and brother will love me to be there. And they're going to pay all your bills? I would chip in. Well, that's big of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they wouldn't charge me room and board. So, from what I'm making with uh, my Social Security, I could take care of a phone bill and my credit card bill and have money for groceries and that. See, How about chip in for electric and cable? And, and People say yes. Iggy didn't have a retirement plan. He just laid right. it out there like a nice warm yeah, blanket. Yeah, move in with a relative. Oh, God. She a younger or older sister? She's younger. And then the first they're hearing about it, or do they listen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you think they would think of this idea? I don't know. She misses her big brother. 
I'm sure Buck Swope is going to send this to, what, the Friendly Confines She'd probably love it. Support my, brother, my brother-in-law would probably put the kibosh on it. Uh, Nate in Tallahassee insists that Tallahassee has hills. Doug, Tallahassee? Yeah, way up in the northern part. Some parts of northern Florida I found to have, like, a little bit more hills, but south yeah. Florida. Yeah, flat it's is perf- all perfectly flat. Doug, has your son in Tampa visited St. Louis's Ikea to change his mind? <laughs> it's in the Hunchback of Vaughn Castle. I, I think he may have been there once. It's big. And yet still he lives in Florida. If you're Some retiring sort of to Florida, um, we're going to need that car we gave you back. That's from Jamie Burkhardt, but it came from KG and O-Town's text accounts. Oh, could you give the car back? You wouldn't give it back, would you? No, it's not my car. I'd have to give it back. You can get your little moped and drive around. Oh, the Vespa. Yeah, that'd be a long drive to Florida <laughs> on a moped. <laughs> well, I did <laughs> I did. I meant get the moped in Florida. You're going to probably yeah. have to travel somehow to your get down. Your skin would be just... Roughed up after that much. Oh, can you imagine how much chapstick you go through? Oh, <laughs> I need two Burt's Bees on me at all times. I think they have a golf cart for the cul de sac. So you just just take that. Bop around there the you golf go. cart. Bop around. I think even a motorcycle, <laughs> a long motorcycle ride would be exhausting. Yeah. When it, with all that wind in your face. and the, If yeah. you got one of those motorcycles with the bars, the handles are up high. Oh. Tough. I don't know how they drive those things. But all the blood flow goes down. Like, I feel like my hands are you just think, not having yeah. enough strength to, like, hold that. <laughs> and that's just a look at me, I'm cool type of thing. I'm they're sure it's exhilarating. They're called choppers, Doug. I know. It almost has to be, because I don't know how that could be. How is that comfortable? You're driving, your hands are way up here. Or how is it safe? I guess the rack and pinion steering is pretty good on those things, but... Rack and pinion steering. <clears throat> what is that exactly? I have no clue. Oh. I would hate to get the car back. The, um, <laughs> We're back to that. Yeah. Let's get well, back to your retirement plan. Well, well, Jamie's got me in a 2024 uh, Toyota Corolla hatchback. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a car to like for your kid in college <laughs> yeah. and that, this is the perfect car. It's kind of small, compact. Yeah. It's about 34 miles to the gallon. Nice. You can almost do one of those. Get closer to the fire. I mean, <laughs> let me tell you about this hatchback. I like the voice that you use mm-hmm. for that. That was a good ad. Yeah. Well, I think you should probably call your sister today and ask <laughs> if you can move in. No, I enjoy doing the show. Yeah, we have the phone lines. I mean, she could just call us. Oh, yeah. Callier and Thompson, right. uh, 636 9004 TMA. I'm sure the listeners would love me to move to Florida. Quit. I'm sure there'll be a big contingent in the text line, but I'd miss you, and I think the show would miss you as well. Well, maybe you could do the show from down there. There you go. It's been done before. You wouldn't be interested in that, would you? No, I mean, I was just being silly. I'm not going to retire and go move in with my sister. Oh, okay. I thought it was a pretty good retirement plan. I'm going to say I kind of wanted to get her on air and... I just retired out of Miami, be a bum. Go <laughs> go to Hallover Beach every day, like I said, and you can there's showers there, there's friendly people at the nude beach that always have food. Hello. Oh. <laughs> That's your retirement plan is to beg food from people at a nude beach? <laughs> I wouldn't have to beg. Why? Just hang out with them all day and hey, want a sandwich? Sure. Just gonna walk up to strangers every day, a different set of strangers. Hang out with them, uh, and they'll feed you. Hi, that's, all. that's it? Okay. Just check in. Good. See ya. Yeah, that's what nudists do. They're very friendly people. You just kind of hang out. But at some them. point, the police are going to come and say, move along, buddy. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm, just, I'm on the beach. Yeah, they but don't. if you're begging people... I'm not begging. If you're home, I don't think they allow you to sleep there overnight. Yeah, there's some bushes up there. Mm. There's a bunch of bushes behind the uh, beach. Just crawl because you want to be here. You're subscribing <laughs> to to what we do. So I mean, if you want to go on there and you know talk about Giambi or anybody else, be my guest. Okay. Yeah, you're paying the two ninety five a month for this <laughs> Giambi thing. <laughs> this is how you see your golden years is sleeping in a bush. I'm just saying, if it came to that, there's ways of surviving and being fairly happy being homeless. <laughs> oh, this has got to be one of the best ads. <laughs> You could be selling ha- your home and going to tent city. <laughs> Happy being homeless. Well, there's there's worse ways. Living in this city in the winter under an overpass when it's 10 degrees. You're in Florida and Miami. You know, nudist people are very nice people. You know, and I'm naked. I'm on the beach. They don't know I'm homeless. I'm just walking around the beach. Hey, how you guys doing? Great day. Yeah, you want to join us? 
talk, chat, have a sandwich. Want to join us. And then, you know, maybe a cocktail, and then want to go take a shower at the end of the day, and time to just crawl into the bushes and sleep. And that's how every day is going to go. Wake up the next morning, a nice shower, and find somebody with some coffee. You think people are making coffee on the beach? Hello, la, la, la. <laughs> All right, so we got a bunch of idiots today to start us off. Uh, Pete, what's up, Pete? Let's try you, see if you're going to make it any better. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Every single show is about him. Is Ed Herman there yet? Oh. Make it stop. Lobster <laughs> has lost it. We shot right up to 35% crestfallen. Well, it's more than Hands that. are over the face. It's more Rubbing the forehead. It's just I'm getting so sick and tired of it. Every day I talk this. Well, your retirement plan didn't appeal to a lot of other people. <laughs> Maybe it did. I don't know. They're just not. Yeah, you, know, you have to understand that like <laughs> point point zero 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 one percent of people listening to the show are texters. And on the YouTube chat, there's a lot of people listening that are probably saying, that's a great idea if I was homeless. I don't think anyone thought that was a good idea. <laughs> so all the ones that think it's a great idea and just happen to be non-communication. Yeah. No one says, yeah, being homeless sounds like a great idea. I didn't say a great idea. If you were homeless, <laughs> that would be the way to go. Get out of this city. Why do you stay here? Now, it's getting warm. you got all well, summer they, to travel. They have shelters. South. They have shelters here for the not homeless all, people. Not all get shelters. The ones who aren't, who aren't sheltered are those who are mentally ill or drug addicted and... and and run away from the shelter. Uh, shelters are full. They aren't. But 30 minutes ago, you guys were chatting about iced tea. <laughs> we need to get back to more iced tea discussion. <laughs> uh, Doug, uh, producer Joe is uh, listening to the show this morning, and he says, this is possibly the best ad for Mark Hanna and not spending your life as an AM radio producer. It's from <laughs> producer Joe, who is... Uh, Oh, we're not on AM anymore. <laughs> While taking a shot at Iggy, he kind of took a shot at me. Oh. Well, you're a board operator. Yeah, right. Just... And host, show host. Thank <laughs> <laughs> mm, I... Doug for that morale boost. I used, to, I used to park car in my late teens. Oh, 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 no. Doug, we're only six days away from the fantasy baseball draft, and there's a spot open no, in the that's... league. And I was really? hoping that I was hoping that Iggy oh. would, would get an exemption from producer Joe, the statute of limitations. To be up, and Iggy could rejoin the league. Who's yeah. leaving the league? I'm sure we don't have to say it on air, but I'm shocked that league is always very active yeah. around for a while. I'm excited. Now, Joe is a is a parking lot executive. I don't think he's the guy parking the cars. It's a I large company that owns several parking lots. I don't know what he does. All I know is when I first saw him, I was going to the ballpark, and he was standing at that little booth. <laughs> In that garage right next to where Ballpark Village now is. He was running the place. Are taking tickets, taking money as they leave. And well, that's okay, isn't it? Commissions. Don't absolutely. make fun of me. <laughs> you don't like that job? No, I used that's to. It's a do highly it. lucrative job to, there, owning to, parking lots. I used to valet at Bush's Grove. How old were you? I don't know, eighteen. Oh. Okay. This sounds like you don't approve of his career choice. Well, he's making fun of mine, so to each their own. Okay. Came right back. You watch him now on the screen. <laughs> I got a green egg. What do you got? Uh -uh. Green oh. egg. going back to the green egg. <laughs> Here's where it should go. It should go to Glenn Betts Jewelers because if you mention TMA, when you go to Glenn Betts Jewelers on Manchester and DePere, you get 15% off. Sometimes, Doug, on a hole when me and my partner are down and the two players are playing against both of it, poor tee shots, I say we have a fiduciary responsibility to press. And we do. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a fiduciary responsibility to go into Glenn Betts Jewelers and get a present for Mother's Day, our anniversary, and my wife's birthday for like the next five years yeah. to capitalize on 15% off are you kidding me with what's going on at Glenn no, Best Jewelers? you must be. And on top of that, it's it's just fun to say fiduciary. You like that? Yeah. It's kind of a fun word. It's a good word. Don't you have to press before the shot? Uh, no. Got to, uh, you get the option to press in the uh, game that we play after the two tee shots. Wow. That'd be pretty nice. They two, two in the water. Sure. Yeah, press. Oh, you better believe it, brother. Absolutely. Um, but then you can get repressed. You can get repressed. You can get repressed. 
But uh, yeah, fiduciary responsibility, Doug. That's your uh, your, your favorite word, fiduciary. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. And uh, with fifteen percent off at Glenn Betts Jewelers. Oh my, how do you do? Just mentioned TMA. Fifteen percent off. Glenn Betts Jewelers by mentioning TMA. They are on Manchester and DePere. Go online at glennbettsjewelers.com. G-L-E-N-N-B-E-T-Z jewelers.com. The best gift you can get is just because. Imagine the equity you have when you roll in with something from Glenn Betts Jewelers just because. It's Glenn Betts Jewelers, 15% off when you mention TMA at Glenn Betts Jewelers. I mean, if you're thinking about getting engaged, you know, I can get an engagement ring for 15% off. You can, right? You have a fiduciary responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Glenn Betts Jewelers. Jackson, uh, maybe you can make your money to go to Glenn Betts Jewelers by wagering on Circa. I would say so, Tim, because the world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is now in Illinois, so if you live here in St. Louis, Missouri, you just drive right across the river, or if you already live in Illinois, you sign up for the Circus Sports app because the Circus Sports app is sports betting the way it should be with big app bets, high betting limits, tight money line splits, and the best customer service around. The big dance is right around the corner, Doug. Let's take a look at Joe Lenardi's Bracketology and see what they got. I know you're targeting okay. this matchup in Charlotte between the seventh seed St. Mary's and TCU. I think you like the Horn Frog. You probably get some good numbers on the Horn Frogs. Maybe like North Carolina taking down Colgate in that oh. two versus fifteen yeah, matchup later will. in the day in Charlotte. Yeah. Either way, no matter what side you want to bet, <coughs> use the Circa Sports app and have a ton of fun doing it. Which is now available, of course, in Illinois. Woo. Visit CircaSports.com for more details and get ready to start betting like a pro. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one eight hundred Gambler. Or text ILGAMB to 833 234. There you go. Uh, Ed Herman in at 8 o'clock, uh, by the way. So we'll talk it over. Okay. With Ed, see what he's got. What's the latest on the. Uh, is it Ancestry? Is that where you went? Yeah, we got it. You got the results? Mm hmm. We do. We do? Mm hmm. They're going to be released today? Sure, yeah. And we didn't tease that? Yeah. I didn't even know about it. I mean, we. You have a, some sort of detailed printout of some information? Yeah, how's this going to go, Jackson? I'm uh, Color me intrigued. I mean, I can just read you the results. I will tell you that, you know, it's it's not like as... I, I don't want to step on a tease. All right, we should wait till Ed gets here yeah, to do this it. Yeah, is... Of course. But you do have some information. Oh, I got information. Oh, okay. Wow. thought Andy Crouppen wanted to be here for this as well. Uh, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I only know what I know. We can FaceTime him. Yeah, I'll bring him in. He can go on the YouTube chat. He can chat. call on the phone and chime in. Yeah. All right. Well, Iggy, are you concerned? Nervous? What are your thoughts? No. Yeah. Uh, those are your thoughts? No? <laughs> <laughs> I was answering your first question. Are you oh. nervous? No. Sir, <coughs> no. Sneezing's pleasant. I answer to both your questions. Okay. Hey, guys, can I join the Fantasy Baseball League? My qualifications are I will not pay the entry fee on time and I will air all of my dirty laundry with the league out over my personal Facebook page. That's from the Chicago Ginger. Mm. Well, I've always paid on time. Um, yeah, I think there's still one spot available. Well, somebody get in there and I'll be your silent co-partner. Co Don't just We won't tell uh, Joe that I'm part of it. Oh, nice. Get uh, K-Berg up in this piece. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> No, I'd play if I got it. Well, put in a hundred bucks and play. If it gave me an invite, I'd play. Wow, there it is. I'll text Joe right now. Oh, I can't wait to see this response. You have a hundred dollars to do this? Cletus will back me. Oh, Joe, no, don't want him in. Well, that could be. Well, I know that's gonna be the answer. Okay, I've just uh, sent the text to Prod okay. Joe, and Doug will find out here momentarily. It'll take one second. Oh, uh, first of all, why does he get to decide who's in? Just he's the commissioner. Just he's the commissioner. commissioner. He's in charge of, like, the money and that, but he's not in charge of who should play or not. Take a vote. The other 15 guys Ooh, nice. there. Do you want Iggy in there? Majority rules. Ooh, uh, I vote yay. i got to be honest. I don't want to do the commissioner role, so if we do lose our commissioner, someone could have to stuff up and do all those headaches. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it's me. me. It doesn't do anything. Oh, uh, I... He, he settled with K-Bird. Yeah. yeah, he said, yeah. Things come up from time to time. Yeah, take a vote amongst the people in there. It should be a majority. The commissioner shouldn't have the say-so on who plays and who doesn't. 
Uh, well, Jackson, the audience, seemingly unhappy with you for the... How would I do? What the F, Jackson? Lister's paid $1,000 for this. I rem that's from Harrison's Brother Master. I remember being 25 and being offended anytime somebody asked a question I didn't know an answer to. That's from Stephen Time from the 407. Where's the 407? Is that Louisville, Doug? It's Orlando. It's 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 Orlando? Orlando? Oh, it could be the friendly yeah. confines. Wow, Jackson just dry jumped you guys on the DNA non hype. That's from the 407. I, I don't know. What do you want Jackson to do? Well, Make stuff up? Oh, yeah, that's what are we doing? We're Look, waiting you paid for. A, you paid the hell is Stephen time to, to have any block opinion him. on what I do? What'd you say? F him. Block him. I'll block him. <laughs> That'd be great if Doug just. <laughs> Look, you pay me $1,000 to spit in a tube. That's all I did. Oh, how did that That's where my. You paid 1000 That's he, where my. We got $1,000 for this? Okay, but now it's like you're like putting it on me. Me? Yeah. I'm not putting it on you. You're I just... like, all I do is spit in a tube, and now it's on me. No, what comes out comes out. You can't make, you can't do anything about it. You can't make stuff up. Right. You got the printout, and whatever's there is there. It's not your fault. I know, but I'm taking it on the chin over here from these dolts. Well, that's Steven their time. problem. I'm not. I'm standing up for you. I said you, you had nothing to do with it. All right, I, I misinterpreted. I tell you what, I'm pissed. I don't know what they expect Why? Jackson to do. Make I stuff wanted... up. Hey, he's got a kid in Jamaica. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're on the same page. It's here. possible you do. I uh, yeah, texted producer Joe. Iggy wants to take the final spot. Is that cool? And the response I have received, Doug, says, I'd be happy to relinquish the commissioner role and leave the league if he is in. Oh. I kind of had a feeling he was going to answer that way. Mwah. I'm taking my ball and go home if he plays. Oh. It wow. would be for Joe like vengeance. If he did that Iggy in, because every week Iggy played Joe, that would be... Yeah. Well, not only would you lose him to the producer, but you get him out of the league, too. That's two wins. You don't have to put up with his crap anymore. Well, we like him as a commissioner. He does a fine job. <laughs> he withstood the threat of the Live Golf League that was the Drug League. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plowsy's, Plowsy's <laughs> knockoff league. I won that no. league and never got paid. There's, a, uh, there's actually a best of called the drug league. <laughs> the drug league. <laughs> I, I, shouldn't, get, I shouldn't say I didn't get paid. Three people out of the 16 paid me. Who, weren't there 16 in that league? I, I, I can't. So. I can't remember that. All I know is three people. Paid but were me. you in the drug league? I don't. I don't, I don't know, know why I did that oppo as opposed to Prod Joe's league. I forgot what the beef was there for a K year. K <laughs> Go back to K -berg? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe because I was kicked out of league and we you started another one. I think so. Yeah, I think K -berg was the next year. Uh, Chairman Stephen Wildwood, Milagro Tequila Listener of the Year 2023, says, Me thinks the Florida Flowers should get the spot in the Fantasy Baseball League. That's oh, Chairman yeah. Stephen Wildwood. Uh, how long are we going to stick on this thing? <laughs> they hang on to these things like an old catcher's man. Well, he's playing, no so you just go ahead and though. stop talking about it. Florida Flower is in the uh, J. Randolph Jr. fan page of Club Championship? Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Well, good for him. I thought he Find played last year. Ball striker. He didn't play last year? I thought he played I last think year. So. I, I, I remember playing in a match and he was out there. Yeah, he's well, yeah. out there with Cletus. Yeah. They're always out there. Okay. I love the flower. But there was another guy there, too, I thought. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Iggy and Joe just need to bang already. That's oh. Hedonism Chuck. Man, would you pay for those OnlyFan <laughs> leagues? <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh, golly. God. You got the green eggs smoking a roast in the background. <laughs> uh, Jackson, you just texted me breaking news. Let the audience know. So I had the Herman's here, uh, but Andy Kruppen's trying to come in for this reveal. How about oh, that? So we should delay just a moment? I guess so. Well, but I can't be in studio. Yes, you can. <laughs> we only have five mics. But you can well, stand by you. one of the other mics. Well, don't act like you're put out by that. It's a radio <laughs> show that you're on. We, we do whatever yeah, it I takes. I do. So I'll just stand up for 45 minutes. You can sit in my chair and I'll stand yeah, up for I'll 45 stand. minutes. Yeah, I'll stand. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'll stand as well. I love how we reveal your DNA information when you're not even in the studio. <laughs> yeah, that'd be more fun. You don't need me. Uh, Doug, uh, Shrimply Pibble's wife once in the Fantasy Baseball League. Oh. No, males only. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. This is like Augusta? Yeah. There ain't going to be somebody thinking they'll be able to bang her and give her a way better <laughs> trade, so I'm just done with it. Really? I already know what's going to happen. I so see you're them. leaving the league if she's in. I think I would. And that's nothing against her. It just that dude, We can't get a new member into this thing. <laughs> when you sniff a female in the league, it's like, okay, yeah, you can have Acuna. I'll take, yeah, one of your relievers. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's yeah, like a good trade. That's like the people who used to want to trade Tim. 
<laughs> hey Tim, I'll give you. A, I'll give you. A, Remember that, Tim? I'll oh, give yeah. you a as Chapman. I'll give you Joey Votto, yes. and I'll give you Doug Jeter. Do you have a reliever that's Doug got a Jeter. nine point? His brother, he wasn't as good. Terry that's why the trade should have gone through. Yeah. A fringe player. And, and I'll take uh, your your. Uh, Packy Norton. Packy yeah. Norton. Mm. Oh yeah, what happened to him? I'll He's take been Stubby reassigned Clap. to the minor league camp. Mm. Plow Hawk happened about a week ago. Yeah, just give me Stubby Clap. We'll call it even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see a female really shifting this league. <laughs> You're saying the guys can't contain themselves enough even to play fantasy baseball? And then, and then, like, the group chat will just turn into, like, a couple horny dudes on, like, a Friday night with too many beer and going, Hey, Shrimpy Pibble's wife, <laughs> you thinking about making a trade just to see if she's awake and <laughs> really? like, just the whole weird... Uh, Shrimpy Pibbles is offended. He says, WTF, Darren. It's nothing against you or your wife. I'll give you a Kuna for a naked pick. I just think that your wife would have an unfair advantage with some of the sads we have in our league. And I think she would, for the better, get her team stacked. Uh, Beer Cat says, Flower was the, there the day you beat Cletus. I know this because I'm 1-0 caddying against Iggy. Old fart can't read a putt to save his life. That's from mm. Beer Cats. Who are you caddying for? Uh, Beer Cats, you can call in. I didn't lose many first round matches. TMA. I want to be a horny dude in the league. That's from Doug's Glue Guzzler, his wife's on OnlyFans. Mm. I think KG's putting together a live drafting scenario on the for the Fan Page Club Championship. He texted me the idea. Where I thought I thought that was a really good idea. So we may what do you mean, live it. draft for the Fan Page Club? Championship? Like maybe a drawing of where each per you know. Obviously, we have the set in stone players, mm. but draft each bracket just or just draw each bracket. I think I did that two years ago. We did it. We've done it a few times. Yeah, I think I did. I did a live pairings draw on Facebook or on the fan page back when I was on it. And we had one live several years ago, I thought. The first or second fan pin club championship. I think. Boy, that would really be exciting to see Doug, where you, you get paired against thrilled. people you don't know. You were one step away from falling asleep when I looked over there. You know. <laughs> and who's Cisco going up against? Ooh. I'll probably have two out of the four. A lot of the matchups on this show are already set, though. Yeah, I'm at You got for... Todd Reesing, Iggy's got Mr. Licks, I got the Pope. Yep. Doug, you playing or not? I said I would if they've got a spot. We'll who, still have about Who do 50. you want to go up against? Oh, I don't care. I don't know most of the people anyway. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> but the hipster Tower Grove South, Denim Golf. I said, whoever. You got an advantage against Denim Golf. I don't think I have an advantage against very many people. He's I'd like play. to play some other stroke victims <laughs> if they're out there. He still play. I thought he quit when Kevin Miller quit. Do you know if Hipster Tower Grove South still plays? I don't know. We just have like two kids now, so I think that took up a lot of oh. time. Uh, Doug Skluguzler says, who do I send my email to for the league? But are you... He wants that, in. Yeah, like, that's not how that works, I don't think. You right? got to talk to Joe. He may quit if you join, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Iggy, would you actually trade Acuna for a naked picture? Probably. Now, let's put you a would? scenario to where there's 900 bucks on the line or maybe 400 for regular season. Your team's locked and loaded. But one Acuna Jr. trade is going to knock you out. You would still mm-hmm. take that risk? No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'm going to no. say. If you're middle of the pack, it's different. Yeah. Uh, Shrimpley Pebbles wants his wife in the Fan Page Club Championship. Now, can wifey play in the Fan Page Club Championship, or will Simps be missing two footers for her? She was a cart girl at the Wingo for years. Doug, is that Tapa Wingo, I gather? Uh, I would think. We don't discriminate at the She Wingo knows some the tricks around the green. That's from Shrimpley oh, Pebbles. Is she on the fan page? Uh, Shrimpley Pebbles, she on the fan page. What difference does that make? Well, the name of it is the Jay Randolph Jr. Fan page club championship. Supposedly you're supposed to be on the fan page. But you're not on the fan page. Well, I'm part of the show, though. <laughs> but it's the fan page. Well, if you don't want me to play, I won't play. Well, <laughs> I'm just trying to get the rules straight. Well, you have to be on the fan page. Except... But you're not on the fan page. Well, so what? I'm, I'm part of the show. So it's not really just a fan page. <laughs> it's supposed to be. I mean, Guy won, two, won a year he wasn't on the fan page. So what? Yes, his grandfather did. I mean, I don't... I think I don't, he actually is on the fan page now. Yeah, I think he is now, but he wasn't even on Facebook back then. Yeah, if you want, if enough people complain that he's not on the fan page, I won't play. I don't care. <laughs> so oh, we're man. saying, basically, if you're not on Facebook, you can't play in this golf tournament. Well, you're supposed to be on the fan page. That's why it's called the Fan Page Club Championship. Oh. Would make sense, wouldn't it? But you're not on there. Oh, 
God. Oh, oh my oh. almighty God. <laughs> Dear God, no, just like you cut and color. That's from Shrimply Pibbles. I don't know what that means. Dear God, no, just like you cut and color. I don't know what that means. Doug, is that in reference to Oreen? I haven't cut and colored in a while. <sighs> you could use a cut. Your hair's down to your shoulders. I know. Would you allow one of us to cut it? Would you allow Ed Herman to cut it? No, Arena will cut it. <laughs> oh, really? Ed April. Herman would do a good job with it. Probably in April as we get closer to uh, summer, I'll get the cut and color. What if Ed Herman were to cut it today? Uh, he's a lawyer. He's not a, a stylist. Oh, this guy can do anything. I'm not letting somebody cut my hair that's never cut hair before, and you, I don't know. You know summer is here when Iggy gets that yeah, fresh color. Down. I want Iggy out. I want Florida guy out, too. He's not on the page, either. That's from Harrison's brother, Master. Well, he is on the fan page. That guy's not playing, I he hope, right? He doesn't go by Florida Flower on the fan page, though. So if you don't know his real name, like, I don't know, 90% of the texters' real names. Uh, Doug's glue guzzler has set a betting book based on the odds that we're about to hear on Iggy's DNA test. Iggy has one plus children. That's minus 120. Wow. That's mm, the favorite. Favorite? Iggy has Lebanese plus 150. Doesn't think you're Lebanese, I guess. Well, I am Lebanese, but... Iggy is convicted of a felony, minus 450. These are the books that you can bet in right now. Mm. Doug, Doug Skugesler opened up a book. I've never been convicted. I've never been charged with a felony, actually. How about that? A few misdemeanors, but no felonies. Well, that's not... You got that on your resume, then. Former fan page moderator Neil Allen, Craig Paquette, says, Why does Iggy feel the need to gatekeep the fan page club championship? I mean, gatekeep it. Uh, Keep people in, decide who gets in. I, I said Hodor, one Hodor. person. <laughs> That's Flower. gatekeeping. Uh, one person. Gatekeeper. All right, gatekeep him. He's, he's <laughs> never played before. He's on the fan page, but he's got a life. Unlike most of these people that are on the fan page 365 <laughs> days a year, he may go two or three days without being on there, and, you know, KG or Tim or I would put on the fan page, all right, this is the sign-up. Just let me know if you played last year, you in or out. Well, he's not on there, so if he doesn't see it, he doesn't know, and then by the it's full before. But by the time he hears about it, it's full. So he's a great guy, and I just thought, save him a spot. I didn't ask for anybody else; just one person yeah. once. Yeah, just a little gatekeeping is all it was. <laughs> and I got a text yesterday from KG; said he's in, so he's in. There it is. Okay. Uh, KG No Town is the sixty-four field uh, set or sixty-four player field set. Is he? I don't know. He was working on it. I know that. I didn't even think he asked people to play it. He just let people know that if you played last year, you get it, your choice. Pockets is gatekeeping the fan page club championship like the Luligans do to the soccer pitch. That's from Mr. Slave. Oh. They gatekeep? What do they do? Uh, they, the put, they put scarves down to keep you from oh, sitting in the chair. Yeah, oh. I, I would love to see somebody do that. <laughs> we also said like, that if you don't want to put him in, I'll just give him my spot. So either way, I don't care. You're going to bow out now? I, I, told, I told him I'd give him a spot. Right I'd save him a spot. <laughs> so you're willing to bow out of this thing? If they don't want to give him a spot, then I'll say he can have my spot. So you leave if they don't give the flower a spot? I'll give him my spot. He can play in my place. You might I told him a lot I'd of get, money right now. Flower. Flower. The, the, I, we don't have the Mr. Lick showdown. No, it's too bad. <laughs> I told him I'd save him a spot, and I think, you know, maybe you have a little bit of pull being on the show. Could be wrong. <laughs> These tax, man. That's unbelievable. <laughs> These tax. Iggy, you should definitely get on that computer and log into the text line. You would go absolutely. You would love it, man. You would love it. I've never been on it. I've never known the password. I don't either. No, I don't know. I be honest, it's saved on my laptop. I got Jackson logging me in and saving. No interest. I mean, I can only guess what most of them are. Who saves seats for minor league soccer? <laughs> nice. Love that text. <laughs> it's time passage. It's not minor league soccer. Time passages would have played eight years ago. It's not minor league, though. Yeah, Plowick, it's called major league soccer. But what are you comparing it to? That M could stand for minor. <laughs> but it doesn't. But it stands for major. You're talking in the United States. It's yes. A, okay, yeah, that's... Would you care what goes on in Portugal? I really don't. I don't okay, care what goes then. on it the here, really, but yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. In terms of the United States, it is a major soccer league. 
globally it is not. But well, the, I, I get what you're saying. Spring training, three of the top three Cardinal averagers are all by backup second baseman. Oh, nice. When they get sit down, they'll be in the minor leagues. Even though they're major league players, they get sit down. They're not on the well, big club. Well, they won't club. be major league players if they get sent down to the minor league. Yeah, it's still baseball. Well, this is soccer. This isn't the Boonsus League and the second Boonsus League. This is below that. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I really think that'd be I funny. I like we're that just, explanation. We're absolutely just destroying the soccer team in the new play I, every now and then. I'm not then. destroying it. I just don't want you to consider major soccer. It's major the, it's the well, highest you, soccer I, league I, in I this country. It's the highest soccer league we have in this country. Right, in this country. Right, that's where we live. So oh. it's a major league sport <laughs> in this country. All right, what do you call the ambush? Minor league soccer? <laughs> Uh, indoor soccer. That's, that's a good. Soccer. That's a good example. Is it major, yeah. major league soccer or is it minor league soccer? For indoor soccer, I guess it would be the major leagues yeah, of indoor soccer. soccer in this country. It's a major league. Well, not necessarily. No, but MLS stands for major league soccer. Well, yeah, you can game it wherever you want. <laughs> All right, uh, Doug's cat Dusty, comma overhead has texted in. XFL now UFL, Doug, is a league to provide players to the NFL minor league. MLS is a league to provide players to other leagues. That's minor league. That's from Doug's Cat Dusty mm -hmm. Overhead. I'm with you, buddy. Uh, I don't buy I, it. I, I don't, but it's a I great product. It's long. a great product. I'm not poo-pooing the product. Yes, you are. That's exactly <laughs> no, what I'm you're not. doing. It's entertaining. People want to go. Here's the difference. Like, when you make it to the NFL, Major League Baseball, you're not looking to make it anywhere else after that. <laughs> Nobody goes into the MLS going, I can't wait to spend the rest of my career in the MLS. Well, people That's are looking fair. to get into a... You know, you're a higher paid job. Uh, yeah, and obviously there's a bigger pay bump. Why did with Messi that. come here if it's a minor league? Well, he got. Have you seen what Doug? That, that's that's an anomaly. He He's, owns half hey, of Apple now, I think. Yeah, he owns a portion <laughs> of the Apple For rights. He job. owns part People of the team. He gets a huge chunk of revenue. Like, it, it, he, they basically gave him an offer he could not refuse. He makes like sixty million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's one player, and it's obviously the best player that's ever played the game. Why do you hate Roman Berkey? He's up there. I mean, I think he should make $20 million a year, but... He also but, came from a place where he was making a lot more money. Berkey did? Yeah, I mean, he yeah. play, played in the Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah, but they're off now, aren't they? Who? Bundesliga? No, they're in the middle of the... You know the Bundesliga schedule? Yeah. Right, I was shocked. Uh, play from uh, August till... Why would he leave the Bundesliga to come play for less Well, he did, like, last year. Yeah, before the season. So he was going to get kicked off of Bundesliga? Uh, he might have been in a situation where they weren't going to keep him. He played for Borussia Dortmund. It's one of the biggest clubs in the world. Say that word again. Borussia Dortmund. Is that two cities in one? Two cities the together? The name of the club. They oh. play in Dortmund. So if he went from Dortmund to here, is that going down? Yes. All right, well, then this it can't both be major soccer league. Another example of the minor leagues is HD2, which is the minor leagues to the Parking Garage Attendance Association. That's from the Chicago Ginger. Well, that could be. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, we're part of Hubbard, which is the major leagues, right. but we're on HD2. And we have parking here available, mm. but it's not as good as the parking that Joe has. And we got kicked off a of radio row. We got kicked around the corner to the bathroom. So I guess we would be minor league. We're in a great spot right here. We're right across from the employee lounge. We got a bathroom right next to us. Like we can hear if it's being used or mm. not. We're right by the front Brian. door. We're we're in position A here. Okay. <laughs> I liked it part of Radio Row. Doug, I like mentality because if I'm feeling sluggish, that means I might have uh, low testosterone. Uh, if you're putting on weight, muscle loss. Fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, feeling moody. Well, those are symptoms of low testosterone. Mentality is a local health care facility specifically dedicated to helping men feel and perform at their very best. It doesn't matter what age you are, low testosterone can be an issue with any guy. Even if you've tried testosterone before, not everyone understands the blood chemistry in men's bodies. Mentality can help. The normal range for testosterone is large. If you've been to a doctor and they told you that you were normal without understanding the range or testing your free testosterone, it was not fully looked at. Come get checked with mentality. Testosterone therapy helps men regain normal function and restore the ability to perform normally at all levels. Go online at lowtusa.com. That's lowtusa.com. Uh, Jackson, has Andy Crouppen arrived? It does not appear so. Um, but we have Ed Herman here if we just want to bring him in. And well, I didn't know if Andy wanted to be here. That's, that's why I've been I, I'm, I'm kind of learning everything as I'm going here, so I'm not exactly positive on the status of Andy. You can take a break until he gets here. Okay. 
Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. Bill. Yeah, because I've got a feeling it's going to take a while to go through this DNA, maybe 9 o'clock before we take our first break. James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency yeah, yeah. is my insurance agent. And he has 365 star reviews, as a matter of fact. And he's online at carltoninsurance.net. He's the Plowhawks insurance agent. Now he's Iggy's insurance agent. He's took been care my of me. insurance agent. He's the best. Yeah, a new car. We had to change it over again because of the new car, and he took care of it in like two minutes. No, I'm telling you, the service you get at James Carlton is Phenomenal. Great customer service. Has your insurance gone up in the last year? Give James and his team a chance to save you money. Do you have kids under 25 on your insurance policy? This is where James saves people the most money. 314-961-4800 or go online at carltoninsurance.net. Once you make the switch, they do all the paperwork for you and then you will experience what I have experienced for five years and now the Plowhawk and Iggy are experiencing and that is customer service that is absolutely the best. It's carltoninsurance.net or give them a call, 314-961-4800. If your insurance costs a leg and an arm, call James Carlton. State Farm. Send your emails in. Design air, heating, and cooling email today at 945. Uh, Jackson and I will head down the hallway at 10 o'clock. We will be fine. It's balloon party, 10 to 11 on 101 ESPN. And then in the next segment, as we close out the Munganass St. Louis Acura, Munganass Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, 7 o'clock hour, the reveal that Ed Herman... Uh, we'll be here for, and Andy Crouppen is driving here for. Really? Yeah. Uh, he must Iggy's, be quite interested. Indeed. Of Iggy's Ancestry.com DNA results coming your way next on TMA, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. After a serious car accident, people have two questions. Why me and what now? Well, no one knows why you, but I'm Terry Crouppen, and my law firm, Brown & Crouppen, sure can help with the what now. Car repairs, medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. We're Brown & Crouppen, and we've got all of those answers. All you have to do is call. 222-2222. When we think of a real estate agent, we think of somebody simply selling our home or finding us a new one. I mean, they're all the same, right? Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics, we'll post them, and uh, hey, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lottman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLottman.com. Bringing people and properties together. TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15-minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker-dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. Chow Chow on the Hill is your one-stop shop for all your pet supplies. As soon as you walk through their doors, you and your pet are considered family and treated with superior service and personalized attention. Jessica is the owner and is a certified pet nutritionist and impassioned about educating her clients on the product that will keep your pets happy and healthy. My favorite part about Chow Chow is its connection with All Paws Safe Haven, an organization that helps shelter animals find forever homes. To learn more about Chow Chow, visit CIAOCHOWSTL.com or stop by and tell them Plowsy sent you. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like the steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little after. Biggie's original hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. It's the heart of March and everything's green The bar's as busy as you've ever seen Everyone's Irish and you are too When you tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do 
When the dry cleaner's lost your only green shirt And getting pinched by your friends is starting to hurt At this point there's nothing else you can do Except tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, Jew It's St. Patrick's Day, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, Jew Hey! Tell them more, Jew Irish Whiskey Imported by William Grant and Sons, Inc. In business since the 50s, Collier and Thompson are known for kitchen and bathroom remodels. But they do so much more. If it's an interior remodeling job, Collier and Thompson can probably help. Basements, wine rooms, man caves, bars, accent rooms, fireplace walls, office, you name it. No need to visit five to ten showrooms when Collier and Thompson provides all your needs in their showroom on Manchester Road in Baldwin. Come home to quality with Collier and Thompson. Let them bring your dream remodel to reality. CollierandThompson.com Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis, and while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with a great TMA sponsor and that is Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. And you may hear a bunch of out-of-state law firms advertising here and there all over on billboards and so on and so forth. But the thing is, oftentimes their goal is to just settle and move on. And that's not what you guys do. Yeah, this is C.D. Longo, and you hear us talking a lot about maximizing the value of cases. But what does that actually mean? Well, as Tim said, there's lots of personal injury lawyers in St. Louis, and everyone handles cases differently. We focus on getting the highest dollar amount for your injuries, not just getting a resolution quickly. We're constantly tracking all the settlements and verdicts in the area. This helps us advise our clients on whether a settlement offer is too low. And if the amount of compensation being offered is too low, we are happy to file lawsuits and proceed to trial to ensure our clients receive an amount that is fair. Visit our website or Google us at Longo Biggs Injury Law. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self-esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA TMA Listener of the Month. Get recognized just for being you, or fake you, or whatever. Quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro. In the morning after, on KPNT HD2. Yeah, that plowboy is an interesting uh, dude, but he loves animals. And he wants to help adoptable dogs find homes. With TMA listeners, catch Plowsy Live on the TMA socials each week, highlighting a dog up for adoption from Open Door Animal Sanctuary in House Springs, St. Charles County Pet Adoption Center, and All Paws Safe Haven. Plowsy's Pup of the Week, brought to you by Chow Chow on the Hill. Everything you need to keep your pet's tail wagging. Find out more at TMASTL.com. I'm gay now. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. KPN-TFM HD2. Collinsville, St. Louis.
Welcome back. It's TMA. It's presented by Brown and Crouppen. Doug, it's the 8 o'clock hour. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> well, it's 8.20. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good start for us. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Uh, Plyalex on the ones and twos. You can't see Iggy. Oh, it's my God. Iggy's in one of the smallest chairs I have ever seen oh, in my life. Oh, jeez. I didn't realize that the glasses I was wearing today were right out of uh, Iggy's uh, <laughs> closet. It feels like I'm in one of those Willy Wonka rooms, you know, to yeah. where, like, it gets, like, smaller. <laughs> yeah. Ed Herman is in the studio. You well, can't see him if you're watching on YouTube. He, you look like a little person, and that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> God, that chair that's is hilarious. Okay. There are many little people out there. They're just like regular people. They're just smaller. Well, sure they are. Uh, Andy Crouppen is coming in. He is driving. I had to call him results. to let him know because I said to him, he checked with me last night, mm -hmm. and he said, you're doing the podcast tomorrow. I said, yes, I am. He said, now, they haven't said that they got the results in because I want to make sure that we're both there for it. And I said, nobody's said anything to me about mm -hmm. results. And then as I arrived this morning, first thing, I heard that Jackson spilled the beans on the air that the results were in. Mm. Now the world is clamoring, you know, and uh, people, the word is spreading. More people are tuning on. People are gathering around and, the hearth. Uh, so I, I had to keep calling Andy to let him know, hey, you know, these things are here. Get your tush down here. Yep. We've got some, you know, history to unveil. So he is in the car. He is heading. He out. is in oh, route. Right. Um, and and the upside of that is it ensures that the people out here are going to be forced to have me in here at least until he gets here. <laughs> and then the fun really is going to begin. And he didn't leave the office in the middle of some important briefing or something. The office. I, I couldn't get him out of bed. I <laughs> I, I, call, I I had to call him six times and send two texts until I eventually got him to answer. <laughs> Um, and he gets on me because I do not keep my ringer on, nor do I keep my vibrations on. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so this is something to talk about. I don't know. It, I don't, I'm really the, uh, the smartphone thing, the addictions mm -hmm. yeah, what about to smartphone. It? Yeah. You know, I, I found that I, was, I had become a slave to this thing. You know, every single notification, every blip and beep and vibration got to the point where I, I would feel phantom vibrations in my leg even when my phone wasn't ringing. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, I was like, you know what? This, this device is here for my convenience. You know, it's not here for everybody else's convenience. You know, I grew up in a time when nobody had any phones on them. So this whole idea, but what if there's an emergency? It's like, Gives a crap, but what am I going to do in an emergency? I'm not 911. I'm not a paramedic. I have virtually no training. It's like I'm the last guy you want to call in an emergency, and um, so so I decided. I said I'm going to keep my phone uh, no volume, no vibration, and every hour or so on my decision, I'll look at my phone and see if there's anything I need to attend to. What are your thoughts on that? How I do you like that. I, that. That seems freeing. It, At this moment, is, I would not be able to do it psychologically. Psychologically, it was, it was a difficult adjustment. But you know what's wonderful is sometimes I'll find uh, I'm way more present, first of all. I'm more focused on whoever I'm talking to. And... Every so often, I'll find that three hours have gone by and I haven't taken it out of oh, my pocket. Oh, wow, that's going to be think, liberating. Oh, my God. I think that, that, that was wonderful. It was a little vacation that I didn't even consciously plan. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was so present in the moment, talking to people, taking care of my business. You realize you, 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 don't, you don't need it. The, you know, with the reliance that we do. It's what just, if you were needed in court like three hours ago and you didn't check your phone? Well, let me say this. They'll do just fine without me. They don't need me. You know, I, I'm, I'm responsible when it comes to my schedule. I'm good with my calendar. I'm never late. Um, and I don't, I don't personally go to court very often. Um, so, like, that wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. That said... Um, There's just so much going on on your phone. I mean, your family wants to keep in contact with you all do. the time. The email, you got to keep checking that. I get hundreds of emails at hundreds a day. Most of them I don't need, right. but every now and then there's one in that is very important that says I got to be here at such and such a time. Yeah. So it, it's hard not to. It's I really know. Hard but, to put but, it away. But, is, but you know what though? It, it, but is that fair? Is that the world we really want to live in, where we have to be at the world's beck and call at any moment that it they happen to need us? Creates unnecessary anxiety. In, tremendous anxiety. We had enough anxiety to begin with. You know, as a culture, as a species, we've been doing everything we can since the beginning to try to reduce anxiety. Because, you know, our very first instinct, the first thing we're built with is what they call the reptile brain, right? That's the part of your brain that is instinctually designed to self-preservation and for the preservation of your children. So that's everything we do is about that, is the fear surrounding, like, that principle. 
And we've been spending like thousands of years trying to evolve past that. And we, we're, we're doing a lousy job. If anything, we're, we're heading in the wrong direction. I mean, basic anxiety, you know, in caveman times, it was, well, are we going to have enough to eat? Are we going to have shelter? Are we going to get attacked? Like, none of those things are really an issue nowadays for most of us. I mean... Unless you ride public transportation. Yeah, but even, even there, yeah. you know, you might survive. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just depends. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that these, uh, I think the phones will, will, in time, will look back on it as the biggest cultural evolutionary shift in how mankind behaved was the advent of the smartphone. I, I wonder how we ever got by without too. it. Don't you yeah. ever wonder how, but how, you how did, we ever made did, an did, appointment uh, or anything? I, right. You know, listen, when I started as a lawyer, we didn't have that stuff. I came to the law firm. It was all paper files. I remember you, you had to go to ownership to try to justify, because the Internet was relatively new, like what your legitimate business purpose was for having Internet in your office. And mm -hmm. all of us would be like, legal research. Uh -huh. And then two seconds yeah. later, we're, we're playing solitaire and uh -huh. free sale. Uh -huh. You know, because uh, that, that was we thought that was as good of a game as you were ever going to get. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're from that era, but when free sale was out, we thought, well, now they finally did something with these computers that I can use. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's uh, it, it's crazy times, and I'm gotten to an age now, 52, where uh, I really don't know how to do all the stuff that the younger people who came into the firm know how to do. They were so raised in it; it's such a part of who they are. They don't know a different world. I pity them tremendously. I, I think they're getting screwed and don't even realize it. Um, but that said, I, I'm starting to lose touch with that. I'm starting to mm -hmm. not care that much about technological advances. Right. I used to be all over it, early adopter. Now I look at that Apple visor thing, and I'm just a crotchety old man. I look at it, I'm like, what the hell do I need that for, for $3,500? <laughs> for that kind of money, I could have bought a new car in 1962, you know? You know how to, um, and I had trouble with this when I first got it, but now with concerts and baseball tickets or hockey tickets, everything is digital. It sends it to your phone. Mm -hmm. You have to open it, show it, scan it. You yeah, know how to do that? I know how to do all of that because I do go to a lot of sporting events. But I, but I, I have to say it. I collect ticket stubs, as you know. I have an, an elaborate collection uh, showing the history of baseball from the beginning, and that now is a dead hobby. There are no mm -hmm. more. There are no paper tickets. Even even season ticket holders, you can request, but that's going away. Uh, yeah, no, it's I, it's. But it's you, nice that you never that, lose your tickets. That's at least a nice that thing. you can appreciate the money that these organizations in printing costs are saving. Oh, they're saving a ton of money, and oh, they're yeah. passing it right along to their own pockets. Right. Yeah, they're, right. they're not passing it along to me. And but fees, special fees. No? You know, listen, uh, there was a time where you needed airline tickets. I remember that, too, and that stunk. And it's much mm -hmm. better having your boarding pass on your phone or not having to carry paper. No, I'd much rather have the ticket. See? He's old school. <laughs> I, was, yeah. you know, I was coming yeah. back from Jamaica, and I was in a frenzy. I didn't know how to do it. I couldn't find one of the girls. Anybody around? I don't know how to. It's not working. Yeah. Don't Everybody's make, going to the plane, and I'm still stuck in the kiosk trying to figure out how to do the ticket. But if you lost your paper ticket, there was no way to get it back. If you lose your ticket on your phone, they can probably send it, send it to you again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, all these things come with some things that are huge advantages and, yeah. and then a little bit that you lose because they can't quite recreate you know, all of the experience of, of everything. And this mm -hmm. happens across the board, you know, with everything. I mean, you, you give up one joy to, to get another convenience, like shopping. You know, like we've all given up, not all, but I mean, very few of us, a lot of us do our shopping, even for clothes online. And it's a crapshoot. I, I, I buy my stuff online, so it's convenient. Right. But the experience of like going to the store, trying things on, making sure they look good or that they're the right size... Like, you know, a lot of that's been sacrificed. Now people mm -hmm. are like, well, I'll order it in two sizes. I'll send one back. It's just our whole lifestyle. Right. It's just evolved. I don't know for the better. Are you on social media? I'm on all of it. Yeah, yeah. I have to be. My yeah. job com demands it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, like, I have two Facebook pages. I have my personal page that I've had since 08. I never go on there. And, and then I have the fan page, the Godfather of Law. For those of you out there who want to follow that, follow it on Facebook, not on Instagram. I don't do anything on Instagram. It's on there, but I don't do anything on there. You're on the fan on, page? On, on the fan, hmm? You're on the fan page? I have a, I'm on your fan page. They get mentioned uh, every so often, but I have my own <laughs> fan page for my, my video days. You know, I, 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 not a huge one. I got like 18,000 people. And, you know, 
they, it's not like they hang on my every word or anything. <laughs> They're out there. Every so often I put something amusing up and a handful of them like it. Yeah. You know, there's not much to it. Um, I, I'm on TikTok constantly. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm like anybody else. I'm, I'm on there watching videos. I love TikTok. Let me tell you, they really know me. I feel like sometimes TikTok, and I know it's controversial now. You don't think spying or anything. Oh, let them spy. <laughs> First of all, the only person who has a more boring life than me is the person spying on me. <laughs> you know, that's that's. It, it makes me feel good knowing that there's at least one existence a little bit more pathetic. Don't you worry though that the Chinese government won't even let their own kids? On I trust TikTok? the Chinese government as much oh, as I do? trust our own government. <laughs> well, it's getting. That you know, way, the truth yeah. of it is, I don't. Who are we to trust any of these people? How many lessons do we need to learn? about the collective greed and the, and the intoxicating nature of power. I mean, history tells it to you over and over and over again. There's no truly benevolent leader. You get into positions and you're compromised immediately because if you want to get anything done, you, you got to get into bed with the enemy sometimes. And as soon as you do that, you've compromised everything. And, and once you've compromised everything, how do you trust anything? So... No, I don't. I have no problem with the Chinese government. Them knowing my secrets does not put the nation at risk. I promise you that. What the heck are they going to learn about me that's going to somehow affect anything in this country, anybody's safety or anybody's other concern? All I want to see are pandas eating whatever it is they're eating bamboo in those videos. Shoot. Oh, those bamboo shoots? Because yeah. they look like gigantic carrots. That's what they eat. Pandas eat bamboo. Yeah, and, and they're fat and happy. Yeah. You know, we can learn from the panda. And and I, I I'm we on are there. fat. I, we're already listen, fat in this country. I, yes, but not happy. <laughs> well, that's true. We, I, collectively, we have the fat part down, but the happy, mm -hmm. like every, it's, everyone's chasing it, and and we're not doing that well. You know who's doing well? Sloths. Sloths are doing well. <laughs> oh, in Costa Rica, <laughs> they look happy. They or, they take warm life, weather. Yeah. They take life on the easy. Yeah. They don't move a lot. Every time you see them, they're smiling and mm. ready for a hug, <laughs> right? I mean, that's yeah. they've got it figured out, and I think most other animals have it figured out. I think we're, the reason we have such a long life expectancy is because we're morons, <laughs> you know. And God, the, the the universe has given us more time to figure things out. Every other animal has it. Dogs have it figured out. That's why they they only live to such a, a young age. How about yeah. this? Ed Herman is my effing hero. How about that? There you go. I wonder huh. which what it was that 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 led to that. You like sloths? I, I do. I do. I, I actually, I, I, one of my latest tattoos was that of a sloth. It's on this part of my arm, right. right across. Oh, yeah. I call him Sammy. Sammy the Sloth. Sammy the Sloth. Really? He's beautiful. That'd be a good kid's I, book. I like looking at him. He, uh, he two makes toad or three? Hmm? Two toad or three? Do they have... Uh, I think there's two different types of sloths. Really? Two I think so. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. Is it? Is, is, is you tell by how many little oh, yeah. spikes or whatever right. they call on their little hand? Well, they cling to the tree. Do the three oh, claws, claws, are they gay? Kind of like the right and left here. You know what? I, don't, I, I didn't even know this was a question I needed to be asking before <laughs> I chose the image for my tattoo. What if I've sent a message to the world saying all the wrong things about me? Oh, you're a three-clawed cl sloth? Exactly. Ooh. See, that's, totally. that's the problem with tattoos. You know, I never had any, and I think we've talked about it before, until last April. Now I've got 13 of them. I got addicted to them. And uh, I don't put them anywhere where anybody could see them, but they're all over my arms and, and uh, one on my back, one on my chest. And a rib cage one I would not redo. It was so painful. Oh, is that right? Uh, so oh, the rib cage. Really? You got to avoid that pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the skin is very, very soft in that area <laughs> and it's right on the bone. Uh, but anyway, that the problem with tattoos is, you know, the social mores change so much. You have no idea what's going to be completely unacceptable in 10 years. What word in the language is going to be put on a, a blacklist that mm -hmm. you can't use the word anymore. And what if, what if uh, you don't know what images are going to be allowed. You don't know what's going to be in 10 years. I'm going to be accused of robbing some other culture of something. You know, some a country where the sloths come from oh, yeah. is now claiming that Sammy. me having an image of a, of a sloth is somehow an appropriation. I don't know. And I'm not knocking the people that, that think that way. I think that a lot of the times I, I do understand the argument and, and I, I get it from that perspective and it makes some sense. But, you know, I also feel like things need to kind of be viewed through the lens of the time that it took place. Amen. And, you know, well, I mean, two shows that I think we would agree, were considered incredibly benign when they were airing. Both Friends and The Office could not, in 2024, have the same scripts that they did in the 90s with Friends and part of the 2000s and the 2000s you with know, The Office. They could if, 
if there wasn't such timidity and greed amongst the the, uh, the the stations. I mean, you know, there's such this fear that, oh, my advertisers are going to flee, and therefore I, I can't afford to keep this show on the air because so-and-so made a rude comment, like when they forced Roseanne to be killed off her own show, which, you know, I thought personally Spoiler. was ridiculous. Um but it's it's the timidity because like HBO don't have the problem. Curb your enthusiasm. You know you think they give a crap because the, the subscribers are not subscribers, going away. It's not advertisers. They're not going away. Right. So, so they're untouchable. But that's the point is is that I don't think the stations recognize that they have tremendous leverage over the advertisers. They think it's the other way around. But the advertisers, they need the medium. They want the medium. But it's They're, not the advertisers who are the ones who have the moral protest. It's the special interest groups who are in business only when there are these Yes, but the issues. special interests would have no leverage if they didn't I have, could not agree yeah, more with you. That's but then the advertisers, they the, the advertisers go, okay, it's not worth you it, know, so I'll just go away. But you know what? They, they, they should grow a pair. Oh, I could not agree with you the more. Truth but of that it is, is, that's the, the process that blows it all you, up. The, the fans want what they want. There's, at the end of the day, if you've got a product that they want to see, you've got a comedian they want to hear, an actor they want to watch, the fans don't give a crap. Check out the sales on, on, on Michael Jackson's music. He continues to make a ton. I separate the artist from the art. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can, I'm in no position to judge anybody. I don't know what any of these people are doing in their private life, but I didn't realize that people had a past a, a character litmus test just for the honor of entertaining me. <laughs> I mean, that's like, did the king do that on a court jester? Say, well, if he's going to come in and make me laugh. I mean, the king only cared that the jester could make him laugh. Mm -hmm. The king didn't care about the jester's private life or his private business. When do you think that started? Because I agree that that's the case, but when and how did that start in your opinion? You know, my guess is, like most things, it probably started with good intentions somewhere along the line. Obviously, it had to have started somewhere in the 90s uh, where things got crazy, and I'm trying to think of when that, whether there was a particular event where everything changed. Because we all know, like, the 1970s were the best decade. I think it probably started with the start of the Internet, where everybody had a platform to speak. Just to open their mouth and say yeah, something. Well, that, that instead would make of just some sense. people in the media being able to, to have Listen, a platform, now everybody did. You know, I, 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 the, plenty of people have talked about sort of false outrage, and, and I, I really think it is a, a, one of the defining signs of our times, probably the worst, uh, one of the worst things about the signs of our Was times. Was it the Janet Jackson... You know what? That Both was the things, beginning of, of false outrage. What do I tell my child <laughs> that Janet Jackson's semi-naked boob came out for a moment in the middle of the Super Bowl? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I mean, I, 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 I guess nothing. Why, why would your child even ask about that? Do you have any idea what these kids are seeing all the time? And I hate to tell you, but like... First thing, a baby is born and a, and, a, and a boob is stuck in their mouth. You know, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's literally the first thing they see in in life, which is, I think, is a beautiful thing when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because we go chasing it the rest of the journey, it's like we start off with one taste and then we never stop the thirst. But but yes, I do think that 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 was probably the moment where uh, the biggest example of of fake outrage. And then it became a thing. Uh, for the record, we're getting a lot of theories as to when it started. Oh, I've let's got hear three it. of them. It started with the Clarence Thomas confirmation hearing, so we're going back to 91 on that. It started with the Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl. Mm. Uh, I think uh, it started with the OJ trial. That's American, the Central West End. You know what? I, I think that there's probably some some logic to all of that. I think you could see aspects of the I would imagine the Clinton evolution. impeachment. With, I think with Lewinsky I think, and Oral and that whole mm, deal. How yeah, about that whole. How about that whole. I deal? think so. I and I think probably when you know the twenty-four hour news stations became yes. became yes. competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's I think a nice play yeah, there. Yeah, that that one it, it forced you got to fill. You right. got you got to you got to fill news. the time. And what happened was. You had to fill time, and to do it, you needed people who editorialized, right? Yeah, you know, opinion-based right, uh, right. programming, which is fine. The problem is, is that it, it blurred the lines. You didn't know well, which hour am I watching on CNN or on Fox is actually just fact-based news, and which hour am I watching where people are just platforming and sharing a perspective. And I think it's valuable to hear those perspectives. But I think they blurred the lines for most of the American public because people just kind of watch casually, and there's no alert on the screen that says, this is a news hour. 
versus you know this is an editorial program. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I don't know if people would it would have made a difference uh, generally, but I think that that really blurred the lines tremendously. Yeah. But but in fairness, it's not just Fox; it's CNN, which it's everyone everyone used to watch for big breaking news around the world. Everybody watched CNN. And now they're just as far left as Fox is far right. They are. Listen, people are always forced into their positions because, sadly, you know, folks like myself who I, I live, I believe I'm squarely in the middle. I really do because I do not align myself with either side. I, I, I could sit here ripping both sides to shreds if I wanted to. And maybe that's the lawyer in me or maybe it's just the fact that, you know, these are just different perspectives. You know, if you're, if you're looking at the, at the earth... And you're looking at different vantage points of space. You're you're all looking at the Earth. So factually, you're all correct, but you're all taking it in very differently because mm-hmm. you're seeing different parts of it. So, like to me, I don't dismiss anybody's perspective. I may view some people's perspective as overly narrow, but I I don't think that people are out there just saying things to say things. Now, maybe people that are doing it to make money are, are doing it, but even that is is saying things to make money. But I think most people in the public are just voicing what they're feeling in, in that moment with their narrow perspective. So, well, yeah. some of these anchors now on the cable news show, they're some of the highest paid people in all of television. They are, because here's the thing, is, is that what they've realized is that the, the more your influence... There it is, folks. There, there it is. All right, we have Andy, filled it up. Andy, Andy, Andy Crouppen has made it in the oh house. Oh, my God, I've never felt so important. <laughs> yeah, yes. the, the results were waiting. I know, yeah. I didn't realize it. Let's see, how am I going to do this? I sit on your lap, maybe? Uh, you can take my seat. No, 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 no. We can share. I don't want to Jackson, how do you want to give the results? Uh, well, I think you've got to bring them in here, right? Aren't they written down? I believe so, but uh, Jackson, uh, what is your... Uh, I have them on my laptop. These two guys. He has them on his laptop. But I don't know if they have headphones. Well, he, oh, yeah, you guys don't have headphones. headphones. That's right, that's right. Can he come in with So, Jackson, laptop? can you come in here? Does that yeah. work? Okay, Jackson is coming into the studio. Oh, look, we may as well all give the... in here. It's yeah, so why not? Yeah, and take my seat, Jackson, so that you're on camera when you do this, I guess. Where were you? You looked tan. I was in uh, Tampa for a while and then played golf yesterday and got a little bit of burn. Oh, how'd you play? Would you shoot 78, right? I, didn't, I did not shoot 78. Not I, bad tee to green, just a disaster when I get up so around That's so fixable. That's great to hear the tee to green. I hate to do this, but why not the Ozarks? Oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, today. I don't have the money. <laughs> don't have the money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jackson oh Bennett Burkett. God. And Ed and Andy, he is bringing in the results right now. What a moment this is. This We're making uh, podcast history. This is Feels legendary. legendary. We have no idea what will be revealed. And this isn't, you know, folks, this isn't just about finding out how many children <laughs> Iggy has. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's a big part of it. But that's not all it is. We want to we want to know things about. Him. Like, was he supposed to have dark curly hair? I want to know what his background was uh, in nationality. I think we're going to tell you three yeah, percent this, ten percent that. Well, you're going to get that. I, I'm not sure you're going to get anything. I would else. like to know what percentage Native American. You think you maybe have a little? Does he have a mighty, caffeine sensitivity? Nice <laughs> Choctaw. Yeah. Is he right. could be in for that casino money. You know what? You'd be shocked, so but, <laughs> oh. but it's Imagine possible. Imagine he leaves here a, a multi-millionaire today. <laughs> 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 huge Listen, yeah, maybe I got yeah. a 35-year-old tech giant as my kid. Oh my God! It's, Wouldn't that be the best? Probably not. Probably what not. If it's her, what if you're Shohei Otani's dad? Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, he does favor I the Japanese. He doesn't oh. look 100 yeah. percent Japanese. No, so young. I've only uh, been with uh, two Asian women. They were both uh, Philippines. So the Philippines. Those sake. are the ones you can remember. Mel you don't remember an Otani uh, and Corazon Aquino. Oh, I guess that would have been your. Okay, the, uh, Jackson, you have the results. I do. All right, Is now, that... now, how are they laid out on there? Like, where do we begin? I think we start maybe with his his nationality sure. breakdown. Yeah, a few sure. teasers. Yeah, let's let's no, find okay. where. Look, his first. Let's start at his origin. Where is this man from? So Iggy is primarily from England and northwestern Europe. Primarily found in the Channel Islands of England, also found in Belgium, France, Germany, the Isle of Man, no. Luxembourg. Oh, the Isle of Man, that's where the Bee Gees are from. <laughs> Switzerland oh. and Wales. An aristocrat. You real? Let me oh, tell you. Damn. Old money. Maybe he I'm just, uh, he just like covered like almost Mayflower. all of Northern Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a Maybe promising wait, start. Can Maybe we get, is there, a, is there a ledger of all of the people on the Mayflower? I want to see if any of them were named Iggy, because <laughs> oh. based on that lineage. Well, they probably went by Strode. So that was related 30, to Henry VIII. That was 39% of Iggy's. 39%, right? Ethnicity okay. estimate. 
Okay, and then what else? Well, we got, we got a the lot. The next left. biggest chunk is twenty four percent, and that is from Lebanon. Lebanon. Oh, wow. Okay. Did, did How you about know that? that? You knew that, right? Oh, I knew I was Lebanese. Yeah, yeah you had to. I mean, twenty-four percent. That's a, that's one of your grandparents. <laughs> that's Lebanese. right. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing my dad's side would be the thirty-something percent, because most of my mom's side is Lebanese. Northern Lebanon and Mount Lebanon is where that. Uh, there's a, a community. Lot of famous people with community Lebanese connection. Roots. Danny Thomas. You have a lot of shared ancestors in that part of the country or which, that part of the world. Which means that this, the St. Jude Center would not exist because it was Danny Thomas's daughter, right? Marlo Thomas Marlo, that yeah. started St. Jude. She's had so, just a little bit of plastic surgery. Here. No, no, well, I just want him to take credit for his heritage. If but for mm. your people, Thank we you. would not have the St. Jude nice, nice Center that nice provides cancer treatment for free for children. Although I don't want to get welcome. sidetracked. You mentioned that only two of the women were Asian, specifically Filipino. Does that mean you have sort of an encyclopedic knowledge? Do you remember every woman? No, no I can't. Okay, because we, I, I, I we may have to have so a special <laughs> episode. I remember, we still different. have a chance that Shohei Otani is his child. I remember mm. different girls every day. I said, oh, God, I did What's the next chunk of, of sure. lineage? And both those Philippines were s strippers. So. Were they, oh, for <laughs> heaven's <laughs> sakes. Were they, or were they individuals? No, individuals. Okay. Uh, the next biggest chunk is 19%, and that's from Germanic Europe, primarily located in Germany and the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There it okay. is. We might uh, have to talk about that one a little bit. Yeah. Later. Uh, eight percent from Ireland. You know, we're Ireland. both Jews. Yeah. <laughs> Just got hot in the room. Right. We got eight percent. Uh, Wales, six percent. Well, you kind of mentioned Wales as, as part of that first group. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why yeah. they didn't combine that. Now here's some. Okay. One percent Indigenous Americas. That's uh, primarily located in Canada. That's not enough wait, for wait, casino wait, money. Wait, wait located <laughs> where? Uh, Canada. Canada. First Nation. Yeah, indigenous uh, American. Okay. Okay. Well, I wonder what tribe that would have been up there. Is that and then could a little, be related to Craig Berube. And then a little Finnish, a little bit of Finland. Oh, really? Up in there, look at you. Yeah, the blonde hair, yeah. A nice way to finish. Whoa. <laughs> Very <laughs> nice. I didn't hear Very it. nice. I, I, I got no percentage of American? Uh, well, no. well, you're a hundred. Nobody's American. Here's other the thing. Than, yeah. Yes, Native you are. American. You're a hundred percent American. You were you're born American here. You lived your whole life it's here. You're American. Pie. Right. But yeah. we're talking origins. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the one percent would be that. Do we we want to get some some health data? You know, this this health data is just DNA data. It's nothing about your current. You know, it doesn't have your. Right. It's not going to reveal. I have no clue what's on the there. Litany I, I couldn't figure it out. I just STDs sent it to Jackson. That are, <laughs> as I do with everything, if I yeah. can't figure it out, I send it to Jackson. Okay, we're going to go to traits. Mm. Okay, traits are good. We're all building up to relatives. Uh, Ed and I on camera, yeah, we are together. Yeah, so you I, see, how, my breath, I hope, is, I did brush. It's acceptable. Okay. For the, for the people out there who wondered. I just took my morning pee 18 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was... So Iggy, Sadly, he only woke up 12 minutes ago. <laughs> That's right. He has a DNA trait of being a night person. Oh, wow. Person. I didn't know no, that was uh, available. Thank God went into morning radio for a girl. Yeah, right. yeah. Does that feel about right? That I'm a night person? Yeah. Do you Not love really. the nightlife? Do you like to boogie? Well, back in the day, yeah, I was a night person. There uh, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Lately, I've been dead by nine. Adopted a morning light. Well, well I had to, but yeah. 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 I mean, you don't get to 500 by going to bed early. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's true. That probably explains my poor numbers. On that. You're also much more likely to not be a nap taker. Oh, interesting. Is this true? Yeah, yeah. I don't take a lot of naps. Okay. Wow. Well, I wonder. I don't remember. How could your if, DNA if, tell if you take naps? Yeah. <laughs> How is that possible? I, you know, I, I, I Are they I, I didn't up? curate the results. Okay. I just in the tube. Though, that's all I did. Yeah, I, I, I think it knows. It knows. It and knows. then we got. <laughs> it knows. What else you got in there, Jackson? Yeah, wow. I mean, the fans paid a thousand dollars for this, yeah, Jackson. They're already not. There's so no way you're to be happy up. This. <laughs> Well, again, of, I can only provide again, the information that is given. Yes, all Jackson can uh, do is read what came, and all I can do is spit yeah, the tube. Yeah, I just would have thought you would have been a little more prepared. I just thought, I just, <laughs> I just, I just assumed just morning. as early as you work in the morning, yeah. you'd be a napper. These results are shocking. <laughs> we, and we have a couple of uh, close Children? cousins. Oh, in the, oh my. Uh, now, what I think everyone wants to know is the child. Yeah. Or children. According to Ancestry.com. Kennedy Strode does not have any illegitimate children. Dog. Oh, goodness. Oh, my God. I think God. the fix is in. Dog. I, it looked like Iggy just floated three <laughs> feet up in the air. With, no, with I was kind of hoping. I was kind of hoping to be a rich oh, kid somewhere. So, but to be fair, so the way, like, most of the stuff works is the, 
Iggy's child, I'm putting that in air quotes, would have had to also submit their DNA That's results right. to link right. them together. Yes. So this is not conclusive. So like if they're on the lam, they're probably not going to give right. their DNA. Right, or like let's say this was like a child who's like 19. They might not have an ancestor. They might not have it yet, right. but what, 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 so what, we'll do it what annually. else? What do we, what <laughs> else <laughs> are the closest relatives that we have here on Ancestry? There, there, was, a, there was a Mike... There was a there was a guy But is named, he a cousin? Is he Yeah, a, he was a uh, that that one was there was what one What percent match are they? They usually They tell. were a 32% oh. match. Oh, that's oh. a close that's a first, cousin. That's a first cousin. Mike there's who? a first cousin. Who yeah. is this well, Mike? And why is he chirping? First cousin named Mike. You, <laughs> well, so what? You, hey. Oh jeez. Uh-oh. Banty Rooster. Is Doug Hunt. Banty Rooster. I got I got a, I got a nephew named Mike too. Is that is all right? Is his last name Hunt? Oh, come on now. Oh, sorry. Uh, it doesn't say on there what his last name is. got it. Uh, last a, initial. It's a last initial. I think it's Mike D. Oh, a beastie boy. No. <laughs> You're rich. From Normandy. Mike D. Does that ring a bell? Mike. I mean, he's, he's walking a, around with 32% of your, on your body in him. Who's Twitter? Who owns Amazon? Jack Dorsey? Who owns Amazon? Jeff Bezos? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe that's the None of those guys no. are, are... Uncle Jeffy. This is not about money, Iggy. Who's the next closest... Oh, for him it was. What's the, next, what's the next of the way? What's uh, the next closest relative? Matt. We got Matt. And Olsen what, Hanks. Matt P. How much of a match? Uh, that one, they don't give me a number on the percentage of matching. Matt P. Oh, no, uh, less than 1%. So your fifth Gosh. to eighth cousin. Oh. Okay, here's what we've learned about Iggy's relatives. Nothing. They have not heard about Ancestry.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to maybe cool. look through this a little more. Shrimply Pibbles, 30% Pibbles. DNA He's a 30% match. I was hoping that that would be the case. What else is on there? I feel like 23andMe offers like eight pages of phenomenal data, and so far I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, I am too. We may need to resubmit. We got, a, we got a David B., who's a 13% shared DNA. That's real. Oh, David B. David B. Hey, David, if you're listening. 13%. I mean, that is worth getting lunch. Well, and officially... Does. Uh, Francis Slay, former mayor of St. Louis, is a second and third cousin of Iggy. Oh, you know, nice. percent shared DNA. This is big. Yeah, well, I knew that. You did? Yeah, he's announced oh, that a few times. Jesus. Yeah. That's My the Lebanese God. side, right? That's the Lebanese side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. I think, a, I think a guy I know is one of your <laughs> Who's second that? or third cousins. Oatmeal? A guy named Randy. Randy. I know this guy named, I think, if this is the guy I think it is, you're second and third cousins with him, which would link you to one How of How do you know? Buddies. You got a Randy. Uh, Randy R. Does anybody Randy remember R. when Geraldo Rivera? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is like, this is like Al Capone's <laughs> safe on Geraldo. All right, I know a Randy Rao. Maybe he's my cousin. Was uh, he a race car driver? He was a bowler. Yeah. Very similar. Mm -hmm. well, I knew a, a woman, and we I don't even remember her name. We always just referred to her as Randy Rowell's daughter because he was a race car driver. Not a famous one. It was just he's a guy sort of a bit. A guy I used to bowl with. Huh. What else have we learned on there? Does his pee smell when he eats asparagus? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, me will tell you. Uh, yeah. Snag that audio. I don't have that information for you, Ed. That, you know what? what? we got to resubmit yeah, this, this to 23 and service. Yeah. yeah, let me say you out here. You get what you pay for. <laughs> Folks, if you're debating between doing 23 and Me or Ancestry.com, do 23 and Me. I don't work for them, but we both have had 23. I'm telling you, they, g they, gave they you a give lot. you oh, eight to ten Here, pages me... of... S such incredible details. They basically told me I'll never have good muscle tone. Really? So, yeah, so I stopped at that point. I'm like, 23 May says I'm not getting it. I ain't getting it. Um, they have a million preferences on there. He'll tell you. Like, and, you know, now that Andy's here and we waited for him, I think he owes it to all of us to give us a few personal details from his I'm 23 trying. Oh, I'm sure. Trying. And he doesn't need the $1,000, folks. Is it anything. possible they didn't get enough DNA from Iggy that he needs to supply a stool sample or something? <laughs> <laughs> Will you collect that? Then? Can you no? imagine? <laughs> I, you know that there's somebody out there who didn't read the instructions and probably just did mm. that. Oh, yeah. Just, just sent them a vial of poop. <laughs> yeah, like, examine this. <laughs> I, told I can't get in. Next time, I'll, I'll reveal some details. I'll, I'll come oh, prepared. Yeah. Jackson, there has it's to be something else on there. So, like, with Ancestry.com, like, what they want you to do, and it seems like they're kind of, their their mode is they want you to pay a bunch of money. After the fact. For, like, a yearly subscription, and that will get you, like, 40 the more of these stuff. traits about if Iggy's a napper or not. Okay. For, and what would that cost? I, I, I mean, I, I want to know what else is out there to be learned and whether or not it's something we could pay, read, and cancel. Mm. <laughs> I, think I, can, I think I can get a free trial for 14 days. Oh, oh well, oh, okay. go ahead and do that. All right. yeah. let, let, let's get some information on here because uh, 
Did you let Andrea know, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Before we start throwing good money after bad and, and you know, do we just go straight to 23 and me and oh, start wow. the process? Over? Start all over. Well, I just, I feel like, you know, no. we, you know we got Iggy's money. He provided his spit. He's, he's done his job. Well, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It, it just occurred to me. Do you think that they share data? In other words, what if Iggy's wealthy son or daughter was on 23 and me? Would we not know about it? We would not. Wow. We'd have to go to the government, subpoena it. We can't do that. We're better off well, just doing 23 You and know right. how some places will give you a half-price refill on soda if we want another <laughs> <Yeah>. vial of spit? <laughs> what, what's the goal? Yeah. Well, you know, no, no, Is no. Wait, let, let me say this. No, no, no. It's not. A, it can't be another thousand because, you know, like, the, one of the reasons that drove that price was the the possibility that something truly embarrassing might get revealed. But now mm -hmm. that we see from this that nothing truly embarrassing is going to be revealed, I would say a retest is worth about twenty five bucks. Do we Seems get like re free refills, Iggy? Well, look, I did my job, and they're all, I guarantee they're already bitching that they paid a thousand dollars, and that's all they got. No, no, no we're no, gonna no, we're no. gonna get more folks. So we're know. not gonna we're not gonna Hold let on, that I just happen. The free trial, so at getting... Brown and Crouppen, oh, we're, we're known getting... for one thing: we want to get everything we're entitled to. <laughs> <laughs> what are you entitled to? We're yeah. entitled what, to all of the up. information. Exactly. What do you just keep Jackson? doing tests until you find out I got a kid? Yeah, original, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> We're on your side. Yeah, we have two choices: we can test you or test every kid. <laughs> Looking for their dad now that we know yeah. yours is on there. If you're missing a father, do a DNA test. That's he right. could if, be sitting in here. If you're wealthy. He could be sitting yeah. If you have money, yes. <laughs> All right. If you're poor, right. please. Jackson is, is attempting to get a, the free trial, folks. And if he's successful. I got the free trial. They're like taking me through this like cinematic cutscene. Oh, oh, for wow. heaven's sakes. How long do we have? Uh, we are, uh, we got two minutes. Oh. Well, well we're going to get to some gold here. <laughs> I've never heard you so quiet. <laughs> is that, okay, I'm telling you. I'm, is there anybody still listening? <laughs> Look, I said it was going to be boring. The chat stopped. I'm not going to turn down $1,000. Well, I two, think but... only because Jackson submitted it to the wrong DNA <laughs> Okay, it's, it's clearly on Jackson. You know what? 100%. You know, no, he didn't. My sister did Ancestry, and we got, like, 50 pages of stuff. No, Barbara. no, she didn't do Ancestry, because if she did, she would have come up as a relative on Ancestry. Oh, she must have done one of the others. All right. That's right. I got a bunch more stuff. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Bunch Here we go. Stuff. Does it mention well, anything about his sister? Including asparagus. Oh, fast. That, there see, you go. Really? Finally, folks. I ate a lot of asparagus. You are least likely to have the asparagus, uh, your pee smell like asparagus. Wow. Yeah. So you haven't experienced that? It's no, terrible for the rest of us. I can't even eat asparagus. Oh, it doesn't bother me. I eat a lot of asparagus. And, well, and your I would urine too if does I, not. Can you say that? You can oh, say no. urine. Okay. Your 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 discharge after you drink water you does think, not smell. You think discharge uh, is better than you, urine? I don't know. After water? No, after asparagus. Do you know that that no, happens to the rest of us? Do you know that that's a thing? It's no. Terrible. Oh when my most God. people eat asparagus. I'm telling the you, next time they eight seconds, like, if you oh. go to the bathroom five minutes later, there is a very pungent odor directly it, it from the like asparagus. It is like getting hit in the face with a frying pan. Oh. No. You don't get well, it either? It seems well, like... I've eaten a lot of asparagus. I've never noticed oh, you, So, no, no, then no. you know. You, you would, would notice it. I don't usually get my nose down there. So no, you don't have no, no, no. The whole The whole room smells. Yeah, I'm it's not. about wow. 60, 70% of the population, I think. You know what? I, I think... I will bring some asparagus. I'll okay. eat it at the beginning of the show. All right. And then we'll all go to the bathroom. I don't want to smell it. So do you think he can... You see, you think that his pee is not even giving the odor. It's not that he can't That's smell right. it. That's right. Wow. All right. What else? This is now... Wait, all right, you know what? Okay. The thousand, the thing just paid for itself. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Are Ed and I the only people in the room? That have the smelly that have pee? have the asparagus? The asparagus I, don't, I don't eat asparagus, though, so I don't Okay, know. so you're a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Whenever I do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jackson's got the smelly yeah. asparagus pee. <laughs> Paul Boy, do you know? Uh, I don't think I have smelly pee. Jeez. No. Interesting. Maybe it's a Jewish mm -hmm. thing. All... No. <laughs> Jackson. What else did you learn? Uh, we also found that Iggy would un be unlikely to enjoy cilantro. Oh is that God, true? It's getting pretty specific. <laughs> Boy, how about that? This well, is free trial. Cilantro <laughs> is one of those. I, I don't eat a lot of Southwest stuff, so. So cilantro, on that list of 500. Paid off again. It you also okay. says that Iggy is more likely to be an introvert than an extrovert, based on his DNA. I'm both. 
Yeah. Doug, is that He's possible? an introverted extrovert. I don't, I don't know that it's possible. No, they, they, there's a thing. There's an introverted extrovert kind of thing. He, he could feel comfortable in both worlds. Yeah, I'm comfortable around people. When we do TMA Lives event or I'm out of my people or I'm speaking somewhere, I love being around people. But at the same time, I just love being by myself. That's probably the reason why I've never really settled down because yeah. I am too familiar with being by myself and doing what I want to do. If she was, let's go out to dinner, let's watch this. No, I'm just going to sit here and relax. Don't talk. You're a wild Listen, bronco, you know what? I, fe I feel like through the course of this testing, we are unwrapping another layer Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that all these years, and we're, there's still more to learn. It's, he's, he's the most complex onion I've come across. We better send him more money. Uh, <laughs> what else you got, Jackson? I got a picture, Iggy. It looks like your grandmother's 1940 census submission. Whoa. Wow. Oh my How God. about that? Now, that's something 23andMe does, has never given this me. This is nice. And that, what does it say? She, she, wow. That's what was interesting. Her name, just so we know it's legit. Is that Claire? Jeanette? It's my mom. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. What do we know about his mom? Wow, it's, that's awesome. Uh, it's just a, I guess it's just a census from 1940, but it's a, yeah, it's, pretty cool, it's an actual image from yeah. the census. That's actually bad. Okay. Can we get that on air? That free trial, Doug. <laughs> yeah, the free trial, Doug. <laughs> we just found out his chicken, mother was though. born in 1940. That's yeah. a big deal. Well, that was, well, this she's was probably older data. than that. Yeah. She's probably older. This she's was, probably... This, you got to understand, this was data that was used to calculate the number of representatives that this woman had in the House of Representatives. This oh, was important data. Okay. Yeah, they only do it every 10 years, man. I didn't see yeah. a picture there. 1940. That's pretty sweet. So Back then, they just counted by hand. Does cilantro taste soapy to you? I don't eat cilantro. No. Because that's a probably, genetic thing. Probably because it tastes experience. soapy. Yeah. Your dad doesn't like cilantro. It gets him in the nostril. Yeah, I don't think he has the gene. I think he, you know, he doesn't like peanut butter either, oddly. I know. He's I, a very it's strange very man. difficult sometimes to, to <laughs> relate to that is. at all. It's not like he has an allergy. He just doesn't like it. That just is nuts to me. Really? Yeah. You're really getting a lot of puns in there. Yeah, but that was an accidental <laughs> pun. I don't know. Um, this, is, this is sad to say. I don't know my grandmother's from my dad's side. I don't know my grandmother's maiden name. Yet. What do you got, Jackson? <laughs> Out right Why now? wouldn't you know him. your grandmother's maiden name? We've I, been off air for two minutes. No, <laughs> no one can hear us. It's always just Grandma Strode. I never that never came up. Not one time you asked about it. No, that's why I think the sound stories are so great. These are questions that I probably should have asked. It, you know. Yeah, this would have been. Name. No. Yeah. What? I feel like he's reading a lot of stuff and not sharing it. He's trying is to it... get to the good stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to find out the grand. Parents made names and stuff, but not nothing. That information. I did find out the other day, which is I was talking to my uncle Jerry, who is from my dad's side, and I just remember as a kid spending a lot of time at my grandparents' house because my mom and dad played softball and traveled a lot, and I just remember they had two things that my uncle Donnie, who was killed in World War II, sent back from the war because back then you could collect things, yeah, yeah. and he sent back a uh, Luger that they let us play with when we oh, played sure. cops and robbers and obviously no bullets in it. And he sent back a a Nazi knife with a swastika on it. Yeah. I remember that. But then I was talking to my uncle, unless he fought in both wars or he went from one side to the other, because my uncle said he was killed at Iwo Jima, which obviously is not in Japan, Wait, not in Germany. Your not uncle Germany. couldn't have told you that he was killed in Iwo Jima. No, my, my uncle, his brother, Donnie, oh, okay. which is my uncle, I'd never met oh, him. I guess then he, he died yeah. in World War II. My uncle told me that he, no, now, he died in Are you in sure Iwo that Jima. the Luger didn't have a little Nazi mark on it? Sometimes, <laughs> no, seriously, sometimes they're hard to, to spot, but there's a stamp that they used to use for their weapons. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, and as a Jewish person, I, 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 you know, I obviously detest all of that, but as a collector... I can tell you that those pieces that have that on there, there's quite a market for them. Really? Uh, that stuff sells for good. No, I would online. never collect oh, it. Yeah. I just remember as a kid. He's, but, I mean, if he sent that back, maybe he had somebody who he knew over there that sent it back. Because if he was, if he was killed in Iwo Jima, I don't think he fought yeah. in Germany that went right. over to Iwo Jima. Uh, no, no, no. It would have been unlikely to have done both. But, you know, you never know. I, I mean, things get who chaotic. Was he, who was he war. fighting for? He sent back your grandfather's eyeglasses, Ed. <laughs> Oh, God. Iggy, you're asking it's for terrible. your grandparents, Stack of shoes. your maternal grandparents' names? From my dad's side. Dad's side. What if it turns out it was Hitler? I know my mom's side is Woods. <laughs> what oh, if her maiden, what if the maiden it was Hitler, and that's why they never talked about it in the family? Was this the German side? It could very well be. I right? mean, this would all make... I mean, the timing well, would work out perfectly. It was Austrian. But your, so your mother's 
parents were Earl and Delilah Woods. Yeah, Woods, I know that. But I'm rather grandma from my dad's side. I don't know her maiden name. I don't have that. I have Bruce Strode as your grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Accurate, again? Yeah. Okay. Years um, from now, when they tell the story about when the show jumped the shark. <laughs> <laughs> That's my middle name for my grandfather, Kenneth Bruce. That was the beginning of the end. That was, that was it. <laughs> so it has a lot of information on your grandmother because of the 1940 federal census. It's able to track back from there. Oh, I guess. that's great. What do we know? Uh, we know uh, where she lived in 1940. She did not go to school in 1940. She was not attending school at that time. Well, she was probably a baby. How, how no, old, what year was been... your mother born? My, 20s, my grandma, I, I only met my grandmother once. No, but this was your mom's census, she said. That yeah. was your mom's name. That's how I'm Well, they said you're my grandmother. No, that's how I'm tracking all this information oh. based on your mom's What year was your mom born? Uh, she was born in 1935. Yeah, see, so she would have only been five at that census, so she wasn't in school yet. Don't make it seem like his mom was a moron <laughs> not going to school. I'm trying to protect your mom's legacy. my mom be on a census, though? Does another show start on the radio station? <laughs> yeah, we do need to wrap it up uh, just for the purpose of making sure that... Jackson, anything else to make sure that we get to? Or uh... Uh, I've gotten... I mean, I got... This is about... How about a part made... two next time or another time? Yeah, I got, we'll got accumulate plenty. some I got, interesting I got 14 things. days in this free trial. There you so. go. There you go. Oh, Maximize oh, it. Well, there, you know what? Right. Said, Save Iggy, it. what is your reaction to the uh, knowledge? I really didn't learn anything I didn't know. <laughs> oh. But you're a thousand dollars rich. You know, if, we could, if we could have just figured out his grandmother's maiden Thank name, you, he would not have been able to say that. Right. You didn't know you were mostly Northern European. You kept saying you were. Well, no, I didn't know that. I knew I was, had a lot of Lebanese, but I don't even know what my dad's side was. So maybe we just found out. I mean, mostly so much European. English. Yeah. yeah, so much English. We're gonna mm -hmm. find out some more information, especially if we get those free refills of your spit. Yeah, uh, yeah you, you know, you got what you want. Let, I mean, can, can I suggest to Jackson that he takes? Screenshots of everything now while he has the free trial. Yeah. Then he can cancel. Yeah. And then we don't have to feel rushed. Maybe he sends us a copy. I go peeling through it, looking for quality material, right. something we can do something with. Yeah. And then I'll be back on next week because I think Andy's on spring break. Yeah, you're on so spring break. I'm guessing I guess yeah. Nice, nice, nice. I, I, I love how he checks with me and makes sure I can cover the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he usually does the night before eleven o'clock. <laughs> no, no, but I was. The morning. I'm not I knew sure he'd I want be all my information floating all over the place. Yeah. Oh, well, let me say you this. You got paid for we, that. We, we, so our, our entire profession is based on confidentiality. If there's two people you can trust with your private details, it's Andy and I. Mm -hmm. uh, we could lose our, our license there if you we go. Yeah, about that. confidentiality. Well, Ask any of my clients. Here, wait, I'll give you a list. <laughs> there's no attorney-client privilege here. We paid for the information, but we'll, we'll exercise discretion. I, listen, you're, I, I'm the most private, secretive person in the You're the, the sponsors. You can do what you want. There you go. Nice. <laughs> you heard, you heard <laughs> that, folks. You know what? Can we get that as a little drop? Yeah. yeah. Sponsors, you can for do what you use. want. For our use. <laughs> uh, and Andy, thank you so much. Thank we will you. continue to uh, dig in. Safe travels to your spring break destination. Yeah. Folks, that was Podcast Silver, <laughs> where I come from. Time to uh, take silver. a break. Uh, close out the 8 o'clock hour. This is the morning after presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. I get asked all the time by people, if I'm in an accident, what should I do? And while, yes, you should call the police, exchange insurance information, and take pictures of the scene, all those things are important. But the most important thing you need to do is hire a personal injury lawyer. This is Doug Biggs from Longo Biggs Injury Law. And if you've been hurt by someone else's negligence, don't take on the insurance company yourself. Insurance companies have teams of people and a playbook designed to keep you running in circles so they can pay you as little money as possible for your accident claim. If you don't have a lawyer, they know you can't bring your claim to court, and they will never give you full value. We recently took an offer from an insurance company without a lawyer on the case from $12,000 to $200,000. You can't get that kind of result without an attorney on your case. Even if you don't hire us, you need to hire a personal injury attorney. Check us out online at longobigs.com. John, I'm so tired of this kitchen. We haven't updated anything since we moved in. The stove looks like it's from the 90s. And the rest is yeah. Are you even listening to me? Did you say something, honey? Yeah, yeah, no, kitchen's fine. We have cabinets. There's food in the cabinets. We're good. Oh Guys, if this sounds a little familiar, trust me, your wife is probably right. It's time for a remodel. Collier & Thompson is a company to trust. Not just for kitchens and bathrooms, but for any interior remodeling job. Need a new man cave? Collier & Thompson. Office? Collier & Thompson. Bar? You got it. Collier & Thompson. They even do wine rooms and fireplace walls. Collier & Thompson is your go-to source for every design consideration. They carry the best cabinets, appliances, and cabinets. 
countertops in the business. And better yet, it's all under one roof. No need to drive around to five to ten different businesses for one job. At Callier and Thompson, they do it all. Their showroom is on Manchester Road in Baldwin, right next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Let Callier and Thompson bring your dream remodel to reality and come home to quality. Online at CallierandThompson.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with Seth Goldcamp of Design Air Heating and Cooling, and I have been a longtime Design Air client. What separates you guys from everybody else? It's becoming more common for companies to just get their foot in the door. They try to come up with different ways to upsell. They try to see how much they can make off of a customer as opposed to, hey, we're in there to do a service. We're going to do it well. We're going to do it for a fair price. I don't know how many emails I have received from our listeners who experience the incredible customer service Design Air Heating and Cooling provides. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling. Online at designairservice.com. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like a steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. Bet like the pros with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circus Sports is now available in Illinois. Hi, I'm Derek Stevens. I've been a lifelong sports better and I'm the owner of Circus Sports. We're excited that the Circus Sports app is now ready for action. Experience big app bets with high betting limits, tight money line splits, and more. Now you can download, fund, and bet like a pro from anywhere in Illinois. Download your new bookie today at CircusSports.com. If you or somebody you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. It's the heart of March and everything's green The bar's as busy as you've ever seen Everyone's Irish and you are too When you tell them more, tell them more, tell them more do When the dry cleaner's lost your only green shirt And getting pinched by your friends is starting to hurt At this point there's nothing else you can do Except I tell them more, tell them more, tell them more do It's St. Patrick's Day, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more do Tullamore Jew Irish Whiskey, imported by William Grant and Sons, Inc. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. If you're seriously hurt in an accident, you'll want all the money you deserve. That's called justice. But there wouldn't be lawyers if justice was easy. No, justice is not easy. It's fought for and it's won. At Brown and Crouppen, we fight for justice every day. If you want some, call 222-2222. Because at Brown and Crouppen, justice is our business. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis. And while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self-esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA listener of the month get recognized just for being you or fake you or whatever quenched by milagro tequila welcome to the brighter side of tequila with milagro in the morning after on kpnt hd2 the illinois recovery center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment 
Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. In Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. James, I love getting emails from listeners who support the sponsors. Got one from a client of yours who switched, and you immediately saved him $1,000, and it meant the world to him. The area that we're really, really having an impact on people's finances are people with drivers under the age of 25. We are seeing material savings for these types of clients, hundreds if not even thousands of dollars per year. James Carlton, Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency, 314-961-4800, or go online at Carlton Insurance. You're hearing TMA all day on KPNT HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis, featuring the morning after, live from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., then a full show replay from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., followed by the best of TMA from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., and another same day replay starting at 10 p.m. I spent four years in San Francisco. It's the Brown and Crouppen morning after. KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. Morning After, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Timothy Michael McCurney, Douglas Elvin Vaughn, Kenneth E. Stroh, the Plowhawk Action Jackson with you. It is the Schaefer Door Company. Nine o'clock hour. A lot of listeners already starting to work with Schaefer Door. I like to hear that. Uh, when that spring breaks in your garage door, you got a situation on your hands, Jack. And that's where Schaefer Door Company comes into play. S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R, door.com. Call or text a number specific for our audience, which is 636-782-3608. It's Schaefer Door Company. They service all kinds of garage doors for service and new installs. They have Monday morning standby service for those doors that break over the weekend. And they service commercial doors as well. If you run a business or warehouse with big, tall doors, Schaefer is experienced in these types of jobs. It's Schaefer Door Company. SchaeferDoor.com. S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R-D-O-O-R.com. Uh, and the number specific for our audience, 636-782-3608. You can call it. You can text it. And they also service commercial doors as well. Schaefer Door Company, sponsor of our 9 o'clock hour. Jackson, tell people about your hair. Oh, yeah. St. Louis hair restoration. We're in a cap today, but that's not because I'm worried about my hairline or the crown of my head. No, 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 no more. I wear this hat purely out of fashion, no longer out of function. Because I went yeah. over to St. Louis hair restoration, talked to them, got a free hair consultation with them. And then if you get that free hair consultation with St. Louis hair restoration, and you mention TMA, you get $250 off of a treatment plan just like that for me. It's just taking a little finasteride in the morning really helps uh, with the hairline, some of the thickness near the crown. And then this laser cap, which helps regrow the hair as uh, a little bit thinner. And that's really, really helped for Doug. It was an FUE procedure. I think a lot of people would like to have something like this done. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, what do you think they would do for me? Or what does it cost? Or could they fix this problem or that problem? Well, everybody's different. But the one thing that is for sure is they can do something for you. And the cost is going to vary depending on how much you need to have done. But whatever it is, uh, how much are you willing to pay just to look better your whole life? My head has never been so happy. Look how happy right? my head is. It is amazing. Yeah. Because a lot of people... And is it are, thicker? Is that new hair? It looks like it's, all it, it's new, a different yeah. kind of texture than the hair that was behind yeah, it. Because you know, it's coming from the donor area. Right. right. The transplanted hair, I, I guess, is healthier and thicker and Do you know how many happier. grafts you got? Do you know? 2,500. Wow. 2,500. They can do That's up... a lot. They can do up to, if, if I get it right, with a different type of procedure with the FUT, they can do up to 3,500, I think. Is the FUT the thing where they rip out flesh and then start... They prefer not to say rip it out. <laughs> they surgically remove a, a small piece. Scalp you. Yeah. And then they, they, they sew it back together. So it, with the FUT, you would have a little scar on the back of your head, but that gets covered up by the hair Jeremy that goes Piven. over. A lot of people have that. People that need a lot of work done usually get the FUT, and they can get more hair grafts, and then the, the small scar gets covered up by the hair. But it can it can correct problems so if, if I you, just go if you're you. seriously bald. If you're really bald, if you got the horseshoe haircut, that would be that would be okay. the thing that you would probably go for. So if I go F U E, then I'm probably not going to be able to cover up the whole top shoot because well, you got 2500. No, 2500 was just 
that about the part front of half of my hair, right. but the, the front half. But it looks wonderful. I'll tell you that. It, yeah, it, it really looks better does. than I ever thought it, it, that it, it, really that it is would. Amazing. And so, if it's something that has bothered you your whole life, you got some, a great resource right here in St. Louis with hair, St. Louis Hair Restoration. They can take great care of you. They really does make a major difference. Go and look at their website, stlouishairrestoration.com. Look at the before and after pictures. Some of them uh, are really remarkable. You got what the I work call that the, They've done. You got what I call the Doug Mullet. The Doug is Mullet. That what it's called? Because you're. Uh, your your front is really thick and 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 lush, yeah. and then go right behind go right behind the bangs, and it's kind of flat. There's no bangs. <laughs> I don't have bangs. Yeah, this is an Oakville prom. Yeah, I do need a haircut at the moment. I, it's a little long at the moment. I need Looks a haircut. Looks good though, really. Does. And I'm not worried of saying it because the sponsor is actually working. You can tell. Oh that yeah, this hairs. stuff works. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it, not up for debate. Yeah, it's not a matter of gee, I wonder if it's going to take. It, it works. Well, there could be people that aren't on YouTube and say, "Oh, you're just talking about that." No, mm -hmm. it is real. There's yeah. hair there. It works in a big way. In a big way. And if it's something that always bothered you, do something about it. Don't do just it. look in the mirror every morning and say, gee, I wonder if I should. At least go in and talk to them. And yeah. Go through your I think options. that's what I need to do. You told yeah. me about the uh, marketing uh, lady. Yeah, she said she her. wanted to come in and, and take Let's a look at it. your hair on there. You want to do it? Yeah, I All really right. will. I'll text them and uh, they'll send her in. Sweet. All right. Can you imagine me getting hotter? No, that's not possible. I For you, it's just day. not possible. You couldn't because you'd have a soft I, cow? I have an erection every morning I come okay. in here and can't do it. That's it's just part of the spot. <laughs> it's not part of the spot. That yeah. was totally ad-libbed. You want an erection? Go. Let Look. Tim get hair. <clears throat> that's it. That's what, they, that's what their new slogan is. See, so you have more hair than you let on to just because you, you, you know, take decide off to my, shave uh, it. My hat here. Yeah. So... I'd, I'd say you had just, you know, not being so a professional. I do have hair. Like when I shave yeah. my head, and I shaved my head this morning, I clip her here. I think uh -huh. here is the thin part. But I don't know what would grow out of here because I haven't grown it out almost in 20 years. Yeah. 2006, I've been shaving my So they would fill in a little in the front and most of it in the back. Yeah. And you'd, you'd Will Tim have 1,500 look. hairs to use? 2,500. Well, Certainly size. he does. It's yeah. about what they can cover. So if Doug just covered this with 2,500... I still got this oh, yeah. here, you know what I mean? Yeah. But maybe they would go here. I don't know. You'd have to start growing that, though. Well, you? you may have no, to go. Oh, he's already covered that. They, they actually, did they shave your head this this tight when they, before yes. they did the pre receipt? So yes. I'm already ready to go. Uh -huh. okay. But back when they would do the FUT, which is the ripping of the It's not the ripping of the flesh. It's the, it's the <laughs> surgical removal of a small patch of skin. <laughs> but in some cases, you might, it might take, Two different treatments, right? In severe, I don't. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know. That's well, you get Chick Fil A twice. That's true. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get hair and uh -huh. Chick Fil A. Yeah, that'll get me in the door. But it, it comes in so thick. You know, you might not need the whole right. thing to, to feel good about it. Things feel better anyway. Well, it does work. That yeah, ain't no it joke. Certainly That's works. what I would tell you. Uh, get involved in the program. Jeff Lotman, Compass Realty, text inbox three one four eight eight one TMA five. Call in six. Oh, do we have a caller? Hello, ho caller. Lawrence T. Nickel. Oh, there you go. Uh, Larry Nickel, 636-9004, TMA, Callier and Thompson phone lines. And then the Design Air Heating and Cooling email today is coming your way here, Doug, at approximately, oh, 945, 950. And then Jackson and I will get on the hallway, and we'll be fine. We will be will. fine. Yeah, I know you will. We will be fine. You'll they, get through it. Uh, they should be happy about the Blues winning, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so we'll uh, deal with that. What is uh, coming up, Doug, wants to know, Jackson? Yeah, I got a little half and half for you. <laughs> what in the world is that? That's one of the uh, least exciting half and half <laughs> announcements I've heard in a very half and long half. time. This poor mf -er back there. To, I feel to, bad for Jackson all the I time. I am telling you, like, to come up with, you know, I mean, yeah, wow. It's, uh, it's, I wouldn't say we're in the doldrums, but we're circling. <laughs> for, for real, if I were to examine... <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It just popped up on the phone. I was checking an email, actually. And no way. Oh. Yes, and I clicked on the everybody's email. Everybody's calling. Opened. Everybody's in the pot. No, it was, I, okay. I opened, and it was the Ancestry free trial. I've got 10-6, but I'm just like, well, 7-8-9 comes off. It was the Ancestry free trial. <laughs> and I clicked on the one below that to yeah. delete it, and it started playing. And they had the audio turned up. I always check. And unlike Ed, I have to check email all the time, because I'm going to miss one if I don't. <laughs> Like what kind of important email could come up? I didn't. Alex is shaking my his my head. email was down for a day or so, and then I didn't check it for a couple of days. And it was an email from Tommy. A couple, can you come in for your review a few weeks ago? And I didn't see it for like two days. No. There you go. I Doug. didn't check it, so now I check all the time to see if an emails pop up. 
So I apologize. And now it could be one of these wealthy children that you may or may That's not right. have. Yeah, saying, but, where can I send you money? Maybe that 1.0.1% from Finland. Maybe I got a kid over there. Yeah. Now, if you were a kid whose father clearly abandoned you, but you became wildly successful, and then you found out who your father really was, would you instantly start sending him millions of dollars? I'd give him, get him started up, yeah. You probably, would. You probably would. Probably Thanks, Dad, to, for leaving me as a baby. Here's a couple million dollars. <laughs> well, blame your mother. She didn't tell me. It's her fault. Yeah, I don't ask after I have sex. Call her a couple days, a couple weeks later. You pregnant, by the way? No, I probably Maybe she tried to get in touch with you. Mandatory follow-ups with your hookups. That would be awkward. Yeah, yeah that would be a little weird. There was a lot of one-night one stands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a lot of one-night stands I didn't keep up with. If they got pregnant, they could have called me and said, hey, we got a kid. Sure they could have. Hey, we got a kid. So blame your mom. She didn't tell me. Yeah. Just make sure I get the million. Well, none of it's that just not there. a very likely scenario. Yeah, none of that was in there. And I, I apologize for the listeners. They were probably expecting more for their thousand bucks, but... Let me see what they're saying. Uh, let's see. I'd bet all of my earthly possessions that Iggy's email was not, quote, down for a couple days. That's just from a 314. Well, if you know my, my company email, yes, I have to go to... I have to go to... Uh, what email service are you using, guy? Drew, or I have to go to... Drew? <laughs> Isn't that his name? It is his name. You were right, Iggy. Right. Jog asked for the email service, though. Drew.com. <laughs> Drew.com. I have not heard of that Forward one. Forward slash tech support. Email. No, at the end of every, every, every month, I pull up email says, sign in. I sign in. It won't let me sign in. I have to go to Drew, and he just <laughs> clicks a few buttons, and I'm in. Good for a month. You know what would eliminate all of this, and we've said it a bunch? The laptop. Oh. Where'd that thing go? Why it was that, sitting why, over there. Why would, uh, because you could check email, and it it's home. easy to have a volume eliminated from your laptop. Well, like I, it, it's I not thought a I had the volume down on this, too. I don't know. It doesn't. I guess it doesn't work for certain emails. It just starts playing, <laughs> but I have the volume down on this. Any email from Drew.com, it plays like <laughs> uh, Crystal City Clam ever said, I've never had an audible email in my whole life. That's from the Crystal City Clam. Well, I want to tell you. <laughs> I do. My phone is different, I guess, than other people's because I certain things I don't know how to do on there. Certain things pop up and play. People I don't follow, I get things from them on Instagram. Sure. I don't, if I don't follow you, why am I getting your stuff? Well, I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I, I apologize. Yeah. That messed anything up for three seconds. Where were we? <laughs> I was making the observation that in the 20 years of this program, we may be at the worst moment in St. Louis sports in the 20 years, if you think through it. Could be, yeah. Because automatically, once you get past 2015, you don't have the NFL. And mm -hmm. I think if we were all to take a truth serum, and I thank everybody on this show, but then most of the people in the audience, if you had your preference, you'd have the NFL. So, oh, gosh. Yeah. I know, but there's, you know. There's a thing where you act like you don't. But at least the Cardinals are making the playoffs most years. You exactly. You that to talk about. 2004, mm -hmm. 5, 6, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, I guess 20, 21, 22. So all of those years. Yeah. Like that just did 14 years. Plus the Blues are in the playoffs most of those years. Uh, one of the off years, Missouri was number one in the country in 07. Um, and again, you had an NFL team. So now you have the Cardinals, who knows, I was reading Jim Bowden's thing this morning, and he's got them in fourth place on the athletic. Ouch. Fourth place in that division. Yeah. I mean, again, it's this guy's firing darts. The, the, the data projections are 84 and a half, give or take, depending on which projections you look at either way. And then the Blues situation, I mean, as delightful and surprising as that was last night for a plus 200 team to beat the hell out of a team 5-1, to one, just mathematically, it is... What was the number again, Jackson? 3.5% that they make the playoffs? Yeah. 3.5% they make the playoffs. And, and then you sit there and go, okay, well, that's what we got. It's just, uh, it's, I'm telling you, 20 years of doing the show. Yeah. Go, wow, we haven't really had a spot like this. Well, you got the NFL draft coming up. Yeah. But no team to root for right for that, that either. I mean, I'm a Packer fan. They had a huge free agency, but he can't talk about it on here. But, I mean, just... No point. Uh, well, the, our fantasy baseball league's draft is in six days, and producer Joe just texted me, let me know when you select a player to add and send their email address over. And all I did was write negrill one one com, And he responded, he got to be commish as well. We'll need to give someone that access. <laughs> yeah, I love Joe to have to give access to Iggy. 
Wow. And I don't want Joe to be out of this league, but I think that scenario to where Iggy had to check his email from Joe to get verification to sign in at Commissioner. Yeah, they'll have to good. communicate. It's be so brutal to watch that exchange. So it might be worth it. I love mm -hmm. Joe, and I don't sure. want him to leave the league. The thing is, Joe does do a great job as commissioner. He does. He's I got leverage. He's got leverage in this negotiation. And he can park virtually any sort of vehicle. He's very good at detail-oriented is what you want in a commissioner, and he mm -hmm. is definitely that. But, man, we, could you imagine him having to email in the grill 111 all of the commissioner passwords? <laughs> 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 Segment one, Ken Bogart's the show to go on a rant about his next get poor quick scheme in Florida, begging for bologna sandwiches amongst all the other liv liver-spotted nudists. Oh. Segment two, Ed Herman hosts his own thought-provoking podcast while on the air killing time for a Miss Cleo-esque scam Jackson did with Ken's DNA. Segment three, back to regularly scheduled programming. Ken's flip phone goes off, and we're again on how he can't open or understand emails in 2024. Let it be awful. That's from Carlos Spicy Weeder. I don't have a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> so that settled that whole argument. <laughs> well, I don't have a flip phone, so it was a lie. Yeah. Well, I have an Android also. I have never had an audio email blast into an on-air radio <laughs> mic. That's from a wedding time. I watched two people. I uh, guess it's just me. Uh, huh. Well, just wish we could get through it. Uh, well, we were talking about the worst era in St. Louis sports. I think it's funny because, like, the phone is on absolutely full volume. Like, with the... <laughs> though it doesn't even sound like a video. It just sounds like... A bunch of kids in the cafeteria talking. Have you ever been in that situation where it just basically sounds like macaws mm -hmm. just cawing? Yeah. And it's not really, you can't really hear anything, but you hear yeah. everything. Just oh. a huzzah. <laughs> well, because as soon as it starts, I turn it off. So you only get like one second of it. So you don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Just sounds like noise. Oh, sure. Yeah. Again, I apologize to the two people that are upset. <sighs> Harrison Brother Master. Yeah, He's been upset <laughs> since he was born, but definitely today. I love how there's back-to-back text. Um, where is it? Where Okay, there's five of the same text. He always just wants people fired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this... They, they said, get to the result, get to the results, and two minutes later, oh, this is pathetic, I'm out. Mm -hmm. it's like, it's like we, even when we give these guys exactly what they want, yeah. when they want it, it's just not good enough. I mean, we can make a skit out of it and just make stuff up. Oh, here's something. Yes, Iggy has three mothers... Three mothers? Well, that would be interesting. That would be That'd impossible. Be we'll just make stuff up. But we're not but doing that. But that would be impossible. What makes you say well, that? It's just something that's... Doug, we're in 2024, stupid. man. Everything's possible. No, don't now. blame Jackson. Not Jackson bad. just got the thing and he looked at it. Now uh, we got more because of the free trial. And I got a notification that we got a free trial, Jackson. So I guess that came to my email, too. So yeah, I, your email's going to... So I can open that up and I can do yeah. some digging today, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I guess we got Larry Nickel, but I see the Sydney Sweeney nudes oh. leak, and I want to read the link. It's from New York Post. You got pics. Jackson, what do you? What do we got going? You got pics. She get naked again? Uh, no, it's actually uh, it was a trap. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it says no. perv searching for Sydney Sweeney leak photos are getting lots of spam and malware instead. Yeah, they fooled them. <laughs> oh, is that a shot at me for looking at leaks? Oh, so they're basically <laughs> like New York Post. Oh, they're, they're listening to the show. <laughs> Wouldn't that always happen? Isn't that kind of a common thing? No, let me tell you, the first thing you do, you can tell. Hasn't she gotten naked? Oh, yeah, and everything. She did a movie called Voyeur where she's naked, and obviously in Euphoria she was naked. Um, and she said she's not going to stop getting nude, so thank God for that. But That's the news we need to hear um, from 2020. Mm -hmm. Here's here's just a, a, a quick thing for you if you do search leaks. If you <laughs> click on it and the first thing that comes up is, are you 18 or over? Just click out of it because you're going to say, yes, I'm 18. Then it's going to go to all these ads and pop up and stuff. So if it asks you any questions, it doesn't go to the video right away. Just get out of it. It's pretty now, simple. Now, Iggy, can I ask that from experience? Yes, it's from experience. Okay. I search a lot of nudes. Leaks. <laughs> Here you go, Doug. <laughs> I tell you, there's a site uh, on Instagram, Emmy Morrow, and they just post pictures of different women every day. And if you see one that's really gorgeous, this is I mean, probably they're not where we should distance ourselves. No, they're not naked. <laughs> you think there's such a Ashley Madison's like they're not naked. Cousin? They're in swimsuits or whatever. But then if you go down to the comments, every once in a while somebody will put their name down there, at such and such, and you just go on Google. Wait, wait, at wait, such and such. Wait, and there a comment section to these oh, oh, pictures. Yeah. Oh yeah. Comments. Oh man, I 
kind of want to see the comment section more so than the pictures. Oh, it's, it's all people from uh, Bellissimo, Bellissimo, Linda, Bellissimo. It's all foreign people. Um, but there'll be some say, yeah, that's uh, Cindy Johnson. So you just go, so she what? lives, so she lives go, next door. You go, man. Cindy Johnson, <laughs> only fan nude leaks, and sure enough, if she, there they are. Why do we need, is there such a lack of pornography on the internet that you have to give us tips on how to find more? No, well, I, am, I am very partial to beautiful women. This is Iggy finding uh, honey holes at a golf course in porn. Yeah. So these guys, God, I wish I could see, well, if you got the name, just OnlyFans nude leak, and if she's on OnlyFans, people are leaking them, and there they are. Okay. Not that hard. All right. Uh, Doug, Larry Nickel has the latest on professional wrestling. I hope so. yeah. uh, this is unbelievable what's going on here with The Rock. He is a, he's a full-blown heel, isn't he, Larry? Yes, he is. Uh, does that disappoint you? Yes. There it is, Doug. Why did he do that? Because he thinks he's going to have what he had back in when he debuted in the, back in the 90s. Has he wrestled yet? No, he'll be wrestling night one of WrestleMania this year. That's a lot of money to pay a guy not to wrestle. Well, he will be night one of WrestleMania. Yeah, one day. He's been back on wrestling for like six weeks. Well, they're just trying to pump up this pay-per-view. Right, Doug. That's the business model. Are you going to AEW when it's in town, Larry? Uh, pretty if I have to work. Oh, no. So you watch all the different wrestling shows, not just one? Yeah. Watch them all. Okay. Yeah. How do you think he gets to know so much? I, I don't know. I thought maybe you would be partial to just one. It's like soap operas. You have your, your soap opera and you don't switch over to the others. Uh, Doug? Yeah. Please do not associate professional wrestling with soap operas. Very similar. It's a, like a physical soap opera. Very similar to it. Uh, professional wrestling is just that. Professional wrestling, yeah. not a soap opera. Well, okay. I don't know. I was listening. I was watching a Ric Flair documentary uh, the other night, and uh, the producer asked him about uh, the outcomes. He goes, yeah, it's all scripted. He goes, you know, our wrestling's real, but, you know, the outcome's scripted. I know when I'm going to lose. I know I'm going to win. No kidding. Huh? Huh? Yeah, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, that was from Ric Flair's lips, not Very mine. good. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's breaking news. Well, maybe for later. And being, if I could know... Everybody has one. Oh, nice, Doug. Nice. Think about that. He went the right of G version. Usually people use the butthole. Ah! I like that analogy. <laughs> oh. Ric Flair was lying. What did you just say? No, the, that yeah, that? I think the actual saying is everyone has a butthole. Mm. Or, you know, the, the same as you just said. So I just uh, appreciated you toning it down a little bit for uh, the 9 o'clock hour. Yeah. So what happened yeah. on the program, uh, the presentation last night, Larry? Well, there was a, well, there was a title match. Yeah. For the WWE Warriors Tag Team Titles, between the current champions, the Kabuki Warriors, mm -hmm. and Shan Baszler and Zoe Stark. Okay. Kabuki and Warriors Stark sounds team. like it should be an MLS team. Well, it's the name of the Women's Tag Team Champions. Mm. And by the way, they won the match and retained the Women's Tag Team Titles. Who did? Who won? The Kabuki the Warriors. Kabuki oh, Kabuki. Sisters. Okay. All and. Right. Then the main event was a gauntlet match to determine the next number one contender to Gunther's Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the winner of the gauntlet match was Sammy Zayn. Sammy Zayn. Zach Zayn. Yeah. Okay. Is he related to Zach Zayn? George Glass? No. Glass. No, no. George Glass. No, that's a, that's a different person. Okay. Did he actually wrestle for a goblet? No, a gauntlet match. Isn't that like a huge that's goblet? A gauntlet? No, it, it, was, it was a type of match they had. They had multiple wrestlers. It was kind of like a mini Royal Rumble. Oh. Let's just put it that way. Okay, now I got it. Nice. Well, okay. That man, Russell, my Irish girl. Who, Becky Lynch? Yeah. Yeah, and she beat Liv Morgan. I'm going to have to start watching again. Okay. Well, anything else happened on the presentation that we should know about, Larry? Well, they, were, they had a sit-down interview in the ring with Cody Rhodes, and he's going to, if he wins the tag match on night one, 
he will get a fair fight against Roman Reigns for the undisputed Universal title. Mm-hmm. At WrestleMania, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, sounds like a heck of a show. It does. Uh, do you have the top five Sick. countries? Sick. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Let's hear them, please. Number five will be Chile. Wow. Okay. Number four will be Greenland. Greenland gets in there a lot, and I don't think they deserve it. Does anybody live there? There's a few people there. Yeah. Military bases and mm-hmm. things like that. Scientists. Like 60, number, three. number three will be the Virgin Islands. Why do you think they call it that? Hmm. I don't know. But anyway, number two, Canada. Yeah. Okay. He's had enough. Number one, United States of America. Yes, take that. Take that, Doug. Nice to hear we're still Larry, God bless you, and God bless these United States of America. Yes. God bless America. No, if you're injured thing. in a car accident, you need an attorney. You need the best one you can find. If any of my family or friends are ever injured in an accident, I want them to call Doug Biggs and C.D. Longo at the Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. For nearly 10 years, Doug Biggs and C.D. Longo have been recognized as the top 40 under 40 personal injury lawyers by Super Lawyers, the National Academy of Personal Injury Attorneys, and the National Trial Lawyers Association. They're not the churn and burn type of law firm. With Doug and CD, you won't be just another file lost in the shuffle. If you have questions about your case, you'll talk to Doug or CD personally, and they'll handle every aspect of your case the entire way. They'll get to know you, and you will get to know them. Doug and CD are local, friendly. Now, what was that? I have my email that wasn't me. on. <laughs> No, this is actually like, that's what the email notification sounds like over the computer. Doug and CD are local, friendly, professional, and most importantly, excellent personal injury lawyers. They're online at longobigs.com, L-O-N-G-O-B-I-G-G-S dot com. Remember, the choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. Jackson, tell the people about Mark Hanna. Love working with Mark Hanna. Great financial advisor. Prod Joe was uh, talking about him earlier. I know Prod Joe works with him firsthand. I work with him. Doug's worked with him. Iggy's gotten some help from Mark Hanna, and so many of our listeners have as well because Mark Hanna really knows how to convey his message. He knows how to balance that happiness, and he knows how to balance life with your financial future. Those two things go hand in hand, and Mark Hanna understands that. If you run into any issues, uh, you need to change your plan up, something in life is thrown at you. You get on the phone with Mark Hanna, you're going to feel better getting off the phone. Then when you got on the phone, and to me, that's worth everything. I know I can rest easy at night knowing I have Mark Hanna in my corner, available for a call when I need him. I love working with Mark Hanna, and I think you're going to really love working with Mark Hanna as well. 314-889-0503 or go online at evergreenstl.com. That's Mark Hanna, Evergreen Wealth Strategies. Evergreenstl.com or 314-889-0503. Zero three. Do you want to support the EDF Group as a sponsor of TMA? It's real simple. Do you have a fire extinguisher at work? The answer is yes, you certainly do. So please email the EDF Group at fire at the edfgroup.com so a technician can come out and explain to your team how the EDF Group can save your company money. Again, that email address is fire at the EDF Group.com. The EDF Group is hot and will prevent your facility from having hot fires. Experience the EDF Group difference. Learn more at the EDF Group.com and think about it. What are you thinking now that you're just kind of thinking about that. Yep. There's nothing else that has my thoughts. Uh, the uh, Sydney Sweeney story from the New York Post is as follows. Uh, again, Doug, the headline, Pervs searching for Sydney Sweeney leak photos are getting tons of spam and malware instead. Users on X can't stop searching for leaked lewd photos of the actress, and they're being met with a flood of spam and possible malware. malware. Quote, if you're catching obvious malware because you were looking for Sydney Sweeney's boobs on Twitter, you're beyond help, wrote Samantha Cole, who reported about the scam results for 404 Media. Uh, so this has become an issue, and it was a trending topic on Monday with malicious pop-up adware that hijacks browsers and floods them with pop-ups. Mm. The content trended in violation of X's rules and policies after Sweeney hosted uh, Saturday Night Live on March 2nd. The Euphoria actress's physical appearance on SNL, during which she portrayed a Hooters waitress and donned a tight dress that showed off her cleavage, had also sparked flattering essays in conservative outlets like Canada's The National Post and the U.S. version of The Spectator. As think piece writers editorialized that her bosom was a weapon against woke culture. Okay, now it's getting into stuff. Uh, but either way, uh, Doug, heads up on malware if you're looking for leaks. I, I, haven't really I have a question. 
see, this is she's breaking the internet, and I know she's attractive, but she's not the most beautiful girl uh -oh, I've ever seen engagement in my life. Is this Jackson? Is this engagement? No, I, I, it's been I, done. I, I agree. There's far more. <laughs> no, beautiful I'm not. Girls I'm not saying she's not stunningly gorgeous, and I think not. Not defend. I think Jackson seemed like that's where I'm going. Not at all. But I have never seen so many people get so up in arms in a positive way about a female doing anything or wearing anything in my entire adult life. Because I she can't has think of one. Boobs. And, and, and so does I mean those aren't those are a dime a dozen, man. You can see those so. in any porn site. So you can see them oh, all porn. over. She's a mainstream we can see them everywhere. Though. But it's like the first time a guy has ever seen a boob is when they look at Sydney Sweeney. I've never seen this uproar in my entire life, and I. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be good for her career in the end, but well, look, I, mean, I, I wish her the best of luck. But when, when, if that's all people care about and that's all you want to care about, man, in your older age, it could be tough. Well, look, I've seen a lot of boobs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Here you comes probably the, have. Here comes yeah. the old sage. <laughs> <laughs> the old sage, mm -hmm. they call him. <laughs> but when she took her top off for the first time in Euphoria, I actually said, wow. I remember that okay. clip, but I just don't... I, I, I don't see her any more attractive than Margot Robbie was in Wolf of Wall Street. I, I, I just don't, and if I'm wrong, I apologize to the Sweeney stands. I, I just, I don't, I don't see what differentiates her from beautiful women we've seen in the last 30 yeah. or 35 years. Even with the bosom, I get it, but we, they're, they're not double, triple Fs. I mean, we've uh, seen the, these The before. belief is, uh, Doug, I just typed this, what size are Sydney Sweeney's breasts? Uh, 34 double D. 32 okay. double D or 34 double D. Yeah, and I can... The only ones I've seen that are close to that, and I don't remember all the outrage in that, was Alexander Daddario in True Detective when she took her top off in the bed. I said the same thing there. Oh, my God. What did you say? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I said, oh, my. And I'm not trying to diss Sweeney because she is absolutely stunning. I just... The... the, the She's everywhere on the Internet, everywhere possible on any sort of social... And I just don't know if I understand fully what it is because she's stunning, but we see them all the time. We see girls like that all the time. Hey, I'm with you. I agree. I, I, I don't know. Some of it's just like, what makes Taylor Swift the greatest star of all time? When there are other other performers out there equally as talented. She's a very good actress, though, too, some, so somehow, I'm not saying that. She's somehow the public just gloms onto one and says, this is it. This is the one. Well, how you're promoted, too. I mean, not only was Sidney Sweeney on a very popular show but she was doing a ton of interviews and actually playing up her nudity no i have no plans to stop being naked and her grandpa said after the screening of euphoria my granddaughter's got the best boobs in hollywood no oh. that's kind of creepy okay, kind of that is super freaking creepy and it i don't is. know i think it glossed over it. that is odd <laughs> as hell it really is yeah. just another nugget to add on to that it's horrible that is so it makes you want to say i don't even want to see it anymore yeah I, that's what i would say okay i'm not doing topless anymore my grandpa commenting on my boobs right. and how great mm -hmm. it is every movie that it's going to be in it's going to be sydney sweeney leaks mm-hmm Imagine that's what her grandpa has on his search history right now, probably. Oh, and even her boobs couldn't save Saturday Night Live. That show has gotten so bad. I don't know if I watched it's it. It's not so even long. funny anymore. I watched it because she was on there, and her monologue was just so bad. What so, was it that you said the first time you saw her topless? I either said "Wow" or "Oh my." Wow. Okay. <laughs> the wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And as a veteran, that it means something. Yeah, I mean, they, they were stunning. They were, you know. Yeah. Okay. And then, what's her name? D Zaria? Daria? Cesaria? Sindania? Sindania? Cesar Sedeno? Correct. 1985. Came he was over. Good. Was really good. good. Dan Dreesen came over in 87. Yeah. Jackson Zendaya? Zendaya. Zendaya? Mm hmm. She didn't even get naked. She just teased. Yeah, because she's. Care, no offense to Sydney Sweeney, but she cares more about her acting career than she does with how people look at her body. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I think this isn't going to kill Sydney Sweeney's later career. She's obviously killing it right now, but you're going to put yourself in a box. I mean, she's not the first actress to ever get naked. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about being so open with it that she may just find role that it's all about your boobs and no. it does not matter about your acting. And I, I'm sorry, I think that's what differentiates her from Zendaya because I think she wants to be in more movies instead of focusing on what she's wearing and how she looks. Sydney Sweeney will be in three movies in three months. I said down the road. I, I said okay. she's killing it right now. She's absolutely 
killing it. She and she's a great worry. actress. Right now, she's a fantastic actress. She's not going to have to worry about down the road, I think. Well, I, she's going to be well taken care it of. It just depends on what she wants to do, you know, with her acting career. Well, what do you consider down the road when she's 45? No, there aren't many women getting naked at 45, except for maybe Mimi Rogers back in the day. Doug, did Mimi Rogers do it? I don't know. Jane Fonda was probably that old. and that. Eh, she didn't get naked. Yes, she did. She got naked once. Okay, well, that's getting naked. <laughs> Not when she was 45. She was I like think she was probably that old. Two when that no, uh, there was another space one. movie came out. There was another one where, she, where her husband was uh, crippled and from the war, I think. Clute? No. Yeah, and she did a famous nude scene showing him that he could still make love. I remember that. I remember Barbarella, but that was just a quick boob shot. Well, this is a different movie that I'm talking about, much later in her career. <laughs> well, she was a well-known actress, and she did a lot of things, too. The Vietnam War, <clears throat> all the things that, I mean, she had a lot of publicity going on during her movies, too. Well, but that has nothing to do with her being <clears throat> sure naked does. in these movies. Well, we're talking about her career. Well, you were talking about her nudity, and I said she did. No one over 45 does it, and I pointed out an example of someone who did it. I'm not sure she was 45. Though. I bet she was. Close to it. I don't know. Okay. Mimi Rogers in the worst movie of all time, Full Body Massage. A movie with her. It sounds like one of your porn movies. <laughs> her and, her and uh, Brian Brown, the guy who was in Cocktail. No, his last name is Brown. He was I, I Tom Cruise's know. friend. Uh, the whole movie is just them talking while while he massages her. That's the entire movie. Pretty much, yeah. It, it Pretty stupid. I mean, it's it good for thin. nudity. It's good for nudity because she was up walking around quite a bit naked. But oh. no, it made no sense. It's just a terrible movie. Yeah. Doug, it's time for the design air heating and cooling. Probably should get to it. You know. <laughs> I don't cheat on my fiance often, so of course I'm the one that gets caught. Now we are in engagement counseling. Here's the skinny. I guess I wasn't paying attention because when I'm at the gym, I'm laser focused on my squats. So I kind of noticed him checking me out, but I didn't think much of it. When I went to leave, I couldn't find me keys, which was odd because I know I left them in a zippered bag. Mm. All of a sudden, here comes the khaki Adonis that was checking me out. Hey man, is this your phone? I accidentally <laughs> grabbed it. One thing led to another and he said, how about you follow me back to my cage? It started out with us just making out. Then he told me his true intentions. I'm saving money for a trip to Tampa. For half a saw buck, I'll spit all over your tube. Oh. The price was right, so I was all in. With all our man sweat, I accidentally slipped and shifted, and it looked like he had a pork snorkel. What? Covering him with enough of my DNA to pin down my Lithuanian heritage. So now I'm trying to explain to my future bride why my phone locator had me smack dab in the middle of Sunset Hills. It's from a gentleman with the first name of Seymour, and the last name is Bud Kirk. Seymour Bud Kirk. Yeah. Future wife is laughable. And young Colts backup Gardner Minshew to Oakland. Looks like the starting quarterback job is Andrew Lux to lose. Wow. Okay, thanks. That's from number one Asian intern, Brian Henshin, a.k.a. ASMR Princess Fierce Adbot. Obviously, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube page and tickle my bell for notifications. Mm -hmm. But I'm also willing to orchestrate a trade. Reserve me a spot in the fan pin club deal, a la so the Strode Man, and I'll whisper you some tips on how to obtain the steamiest OnlyFans leaks. Here's a free pro tip. Don't acknowledge the hunt for or viewing of said leaks during an interview with the owner of the participant in the videos. Mm. Brian Hinchin. Hinchin. I've been a loyal listener since 2011. I love this show so much. But the best part of my day is the 10 seconds between the time I hear Jermaine Stewart sing, we don't have to take our clothes off, and when Tim says 707 in St. Louis. In that brief moment, I think maybe this will be the day that Tim's not here. Maybe this will be the day he has moved to Florida without even saying goodbye. No offense, Tim, but if you're still here in 10 years, I'm going to be pissed. You're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. It's time to cash it in. The mayor of Tough Town and the fill-ins will do their best to keep TMA alive, but their best just won't be good enough. We caught a glimpse of this sad reality today when Tim's mic briefly broke and we had to listen to the elderly dumbasses ramble on about Carl Pelker and that damn Speedo picture again. <laughs> hey, Iggy, do you like apples? Well, guess what? No one cares that Francis Slay is your cousin. How do you like them apples? When Tim does inevitably leave St. Louis, Plowsy will seek out a therapist who can tell him it's not your fault. Shh. It's not your fault. But you know what, Darren? It is your fault. 
Tim says stuff like, after our discussion about location tracking yesterday, I couldn't get find my phone to uh, find my iPhone to work. And Plowsy says stupid stuff like, didn't we just talk about this yesterday? Yes. Put down the weed and wake up. Oh. I hope the Gatesworth allows double occupancy because Pepper and Jeannie both need to be put in a home. Tim, you're the best, but I hope you find the courage to go see about a different city, one that isn't crumbling before our eyes. Doug, that's from the JV Golf Coach. Okay, JV Golf Coach. Good looking to vote, dumbass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, I've forgotten more about the radio industry than any of you obese, self-loathing amoebas know. You text in and you criticize and you take shots day after day after day. If I told you the same story a time or two, maybe. Am I in the top five most ins- most insubordinate employees of all time? <laughs> Embrace debate. <laughs> Did I lose my phone in Jamaica but found it just in time to play golf rival on full volume with no headphones and my Timu slippers and my lap to the chagrin of everyone else on the flight? Yes, I did. But I've worked two, sometimes three hours. <laughs> but I've worked two, sometimes three hours a day for 30 years. I've paid my dues. So if I want to commandeer a borrowed four-door hatchback RAV4 that I, I was supposed to have back on the lot in April of 2021. I just got the thing three days ago. <laughs> hey, come on now. Sorry. <laughs> Drive down to Orlando and take squatter's rights with my sister and her husband. Then that's exactly what I'm going to do. And when she inevitably tries tires of me, Throws out me and my CD collection with multiple copies of Wishbone Ash's self-titled album, Sade's Greatest Hits Volume 2. And the soundtrack to Laguna Heat, a little-known Skinamax movie from 1987 where the mom from 7th Heaven showed her milky clackers. Oh, gosh. (laughs) I'll just go live as a homeless vagabond at the nearest nude beach where I can catch crumbs that cascade down from the gunts and fupas of 70-year-old retired New Yorkers who have moved south and looked for lost iPhones that instead of returning to the owner like a decent human human or selling like a scumbag, I'll just throw out the window like a (laughs) maniacal schizophrenic. Save me a spot in a fan page club championship. I was sacked deep in the Scotty Pigeon Gay Gas Station Brothel documentary after I discarded the Academy Award Best Picture winner 30 minutes in and let the deadline pass me by. You want an erection? Go. Let Tim get hair. That's some Golden State running practice at my house. Pop, pop. What am I about? Doug, blueberry, pop, pop. Blueberry, pop, pop. And finally... Missouri, good basketball teams. Those college teams are really good. What are they going to do this part? Pretty good stuff, huh? The Billikens will try and extend Travis Ford's coaching tenure at least one more game when they face Wode Island this afternoon in the first round of the A-10 tournament. I'm sure Terrence Hargrove and company will have an extra spring in our step after seeing the Bang Bang Niner Gang guys post on the fan page wishing the Billikens good luck in the 8 10 tournament as he shared photos of himself wearing slew gear and posing with cheerleaders from five years ago when the Billikens were playing an NCAA tournament in San Jose. What's funny is this Bang Bang Billikens gang post from a guy who crashed a slew pep rally five years ago was not the most odd post to the fan page in the last 40 hours. No, that honor came from the most odd. No, that honor came from January last year of the month. Tiny PP, who in his most recent fan page video ditched the unsolicited Supreme Court talk for some unsolicited singing. Zero likes and zero comments. Sorry, my phone is acting up and playing sounds while I check email ever since I searched for Sydney Sweeney leaked nudes. I'm waiting for an email from my financial planner. I'm trying to figure out if I have enough money to save to retire. I have this 401k that my employer forced me to get when I started working here. Really, I just need enough for a bus ticket to Hallover Beach and maybe some sunscreen. I'm just going to stalk nudists from behind the bushes and casually beg for scraps like a wild animal. Well, it's not really stalking unless I follow them home. This is more like pathetic creeping. I can't get into my email anyway until Drew gets here to log me into Drew.com. Mm. Doug, that's Buck Swope, and that's what we have for the Design Air Heating and Cooling email of the day. With a nice little email. I feel it's between Blueberry Pop-Up and Buck Swope's nice little email. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Blueberry Pop-Up. 
Yeah, it was between those two, and I got Blueberry Pop-Up. Blueberry no, Pop-Up! Okay. I mean, Doug, seven of eight so far. What a run. In Credible. March. Yeah, Do you think he, he like feels the good about it? Do you think he feels bad about the fact that he could have had eight for eight? A little frustrated that, yeah, the, that the winning That's streak hasn't continued. I voted for him yesterday. Yeah. Well, he won yesterday. Well, the day before, the, the day he didn't vote or didn't win, I voted for him. But he didn't have the best email that day. I thought he did. Yeah. That's why I voted for him. Okay. JV Golf Coach, do better. <laughs> uh, Jackson and I will do better because we're going to go down the hallway and we're going to deal with it. And we're going to break down the Blues in a game against Boston, that they uh -huh. were eight points out of a playoff spot, and the Cardinals in spring training. God. Well, that'll be fun. I couldn't imagine. Like, do you guys run best ofs? Oh. You guys couldn't pick like a best of that you guys could do for. Oh my goodness! I don't know. There's a lot of sports to talk about. <sighs> We're getting into tournament time too. Oh, I love the tournament. Well, you know, you talk about the tournament, a ten tournament. Uh, all right, uh, Bloom Party is coming up in a matter of moments on 101 ESPN for the Plow for Action Jackson, for Kenneth Iggy Strode, for my brother Kevin, for Douglas Sullivan Vaughn, and Tim McKernan. This has been the morning after, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen.